This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Wonderful afternoon show here at Juma Safari Life. We are starting our show here at quarantine with the head of Impala amongst the Impala. This is a cold world beast smell. It looks like uh, they're enjoying a bit of the uh, shadow that uh, it really provides by Amarura tree. From myself, Rexon, and I have Owen behind the camera. It's a great afternoon for us. We have plans. Our plan is to head to the east, of course, to look at uh, pride of lions. We understand that there's quite a few pride that are really on the eastern side, Chita Cart Line, for you to enjoy, for us also to join and to really enjoy the present of this uh, Tupra Torchwood. And um, we have Kuhumas, both pride, yet look like. Uh, the male that haven't spotted the other pride so it could be something amazing for our afternoon to watch we'll take our time a moment here to the east and also this is life and interactive experience if you watch us on the app and you can watch us this on our website you can register to ask question or let me know what you would like to see even chat about it will be nice while we're driving around here, ask questions and what you'd like to see, we'll be able to do that for you for the afternoon. However, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do sub subscribe so while they can notify you with all other amazing contact we have. It's, it's very simple, you know what you do, but what makes me having a lot of energy today because I know that we have contact around uh, this afternoon. We have Pride of Lions, we have uh, elephants that we have saw that might be down into the water hall. Cedric at the moment is really busy following on the lamb call of Impala that uh, Susanna, yes, is the best area to start the show. Look at what we have. Beautiful. We have this uh, beautiful, beautiful animal uh, right at the middle of the quarantine. And Cedric is more to the north of quarantine. He had the Impala lambing quickly left before in time to follow up. In the area where this morning we have seen a tracks, it might be a male leopard. I'm not sure yet with these tracks. It could be Mlowati. It could be uh, that uh, a TP male, but I doubt TP was in the west. He cannot walk so far like this. This tracks was coming from the eastern south, south of uh, Vietela, Pan itself headed uh, north of uh, our camp, DRC camp, which Impala was still talking there. I believe that uh, Cedric is very uh, interested and uh, he might be able to uh, follow up and able to find that leopard. As we are living here, heading to the north, try to look at the Alliance. Look at this head of Impala. Quite few of the young males. At a time, there's no need, of course, in this season for Impala to separate all the young males that are within the structure of the uh, dominant male because mating is no longer in practices unless if it's one of the uh, female that she's late picker, she's going to mate. But there's no, I mean, reason to contest not to uh, accept this young male to join in because the male have done the job, survival of the fittest. Daniela, you're 100% good. A very good day and a uh, lot of energy, uh, I feel like. <coughs> it start to be a little bit windy breaking up here. That's the reason you find these animals are sitting in the middle of the quarantine. And this time for uh, Kudu, I mean, will be to lie down because it's the daylight. More eyes out in the bush, they've been together with this Impala because you can able to use them to spot any enemy coming into the area. That's how it works. Look at how beautiful the horns. Horns like a buffalo and tail like a horse. 
striped like a zebra. This is an animal, many people tease it is, that uh, it made part of the of all species out in nature. But I really love seeing wildebeest in the area. For me, it's a joy. Due to the history of quarantine, Uh, Tanya, let me calculate this one. There might be 40 all in together, but Tanya, let me tell you that uh, you can find 100 up to 400 impala, even 1,000 impala at uh, one area. But that, it's uh, really attract quite a lot of predators. So the impala also getting smart and clever. They break up in a very small pockets there and there in order to be look like in a very small size where the lions and leopard cannot focus to stray them behind all the time because that can attract lots of uh, predators if in big numbers. Let me uh, head to the east and uh, follow up on the lines before they head into the thicket and disappear on that area. Look like there was a kill. There might be a lot of things, activities that uh, can take place on that area. Vultures, of course, slender mongoose, of course, lots of uh, uh, small creatures that might be seen around or carnivore that must be seen around their yeah, lion kill. So let me take an opportunity and head towards the area. Let us look uh, in a different location how the weather look like today, this afternoon. Yes, it is a very warm uh, afternoon here at Juma and it is a beautiful afternoon. I'm loving it and I'm just searching around. I heard some uh, kudu alarm calling a little bit earlier. So just trying to scratch around. But anyway, good afternoon everybody. My name is Cedric and the man with the plan behind the cam is BK. So yes, thank you. So well, I'm going to try and just uh, look on Aubrey's Road. I heard that kudu alarm calling maybe I'd like to... Uh, to the northeastern side or western side of our camp and I'm not too sure I haven't seen any tracks yet I don't know if uh, kudus do alarm call you know that there is something around because they weren't just alarm call and it wasn't just one alarm call they were barking a few times so I'm gonna just slowly go ahead into that area again I'll have to go down maybe Zoe's just to take a look around this side um, so yeah I'm not too sure which leopard, if it's a male or it's a female, or it could be lions, I'm not too sure. I haven't seen a single track yet, so. Ah, oh, I think uh, BK, I think you could queuing the radio there. <laughs> All right, anyway, I'm gonna go down to Zoe's and we're gonna take a look in that area. But it's a beautiful day. What a wonder, wonder, wonderful morning we've had. And I mean, it was fantastic just to see, of course, those lions this morning. And I'm hoping that uh, Rexon can follow up there and relocate on those uh, lions. A day like this is a good thing to go around to maybe the dams. I'm just going to take a look around the dam areas as well because you might see uh, some uh, elephants. Uh, sorry, Tadeo, I just heard strayers. Mm, there's some funny thing that's happening here. I don't know, maybe. I'll <laughs> so yes, I'm sure it's going to be the same. How nice was it to see all those hyenas? I mean, we saw 10 hyenas this morning, 10 different uh, individuals from the Juma clan. So that was fantastic. And I was just speaking about it the other day. I was really missing um, certain hyenas. Look, I miss all of them, but they're on, especially Corky. And to see Corky this morning, uh, that female hyena was uh, brilliant. I was really happy for that. So, and all ribbon and... Uh, 
Oh, well, we had pretty much uh, the entire clan there. I didn't see June. I did not see June around there. That's the thing. But I might, uh, if I'm going to go down to Zoe's, I might actually turn into that area and go and uh, pop my nose in at the hyena den because we haven't seen June in the cub for at least now, what, two weeks. So, very strange. Very, very, very strange. Maybe they just moved and I, and I know that there is another den site on elephant carcass. Further on, I did take a look because I always take a look at that one. So if I do go to that first one, I always go to the second one. And then of course uh, the ones on taxons, but we'll always double check on that. Edna, yes, they also they do like a snorting as well. <laughs> so they also do pretty much a like a, a blowing uh, a noise if they do see a predator. So yes, why is uh, Rexon's wildebeest alarm calling? And it'll be interesting if it is. Well, well maybe there's something in the area. Okay, we are on the Zoe's. Oh, let's go down Zoe's, yeah. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Not a single cloud. Barefoot. <coughs> Kudu, alarm calling is always a good sign. Oh, yes. Oh yes, indeed, barefoot, indeed. I think, especially kudu, if it's nyala, a bushbuck, things like that. It's always a good sign. Those, those, those kind of indicators. Monkeys, baboons, those ones as well. Do you hear something? Oh, nice. Got. Oh, there. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be diff difficult. Eh? Mm. Let's try and get in there. So uh, uh, it's not like it's going to be difficult.
very excited. It will be my first time to see all the uh, boys, the court line project, <laughs> with all those lines, males, and with the uh, the pride of females. Yes, being five males uh, is no way, but you can see the five males all together. It's unbelievable. Alright, heading down Zoe's, we'll try to search uh, this area. Um, as I said, I want to try and make my way to some of the dams for the afternoon, especially now. It's still so nice and warm. Let's see if there's some of those elephants, maybe get a nice herd of elephants. I'll actually miss uh, some elephants, I'd love to see that again for the afternoon. I think I might make a plan out of it and see if we can find some of those big grey mammals. Of course uh, I had a ticket to dream on drive this, uh, this morning and uh, oh, Alison of course and uh, it was her birthday today and um, she brought us all those little cupcakes on drive this morning and uh, it was quite funny because uh, six of those cupcakes were lions six of them were uh, like paw prints for leopards you know, leopard paw prints but of course they had three toes <laughs> but, uh, but it was fine it was very nice it was a very cute very nice suggestion so we said okay well if we do find the lions we will eat uh, the lion cupcakes because every leopard that we see the leopard cupcake and of course this morning, yeah, if we counted, it was 12 cubs, one female, so that's 13. And then we had the, pretty much the entire Nkuma pride there. So that was like another, say another 13. So 26 lions this morning. And we had uh, six lion cupcakes. So uh, eventually we pretty much devoured all 12 cupcakes, even the paws, even the paws. The male line, now uh, the line cupcakes, ah, oh, it was delicious. But yeah, thanks, Alison, and I'm hoping that you have once again a fantastic birthday further. But yeah, while we're going to continue searching, let's head over to Chris to see what's happening in Pridelands. Good afternoon. And it's amazing how this place ebbs and flows. Last two drives, we didn't see many elephants. And now there's a lot again. Seems like a, a breeding herd with a couple of relatively impressively sized bulls. Including this one in front. Seen him before. I think that is the one they call in Duna. This big boy here. Those little offset tusks. Not entirely certain, but I think he's called Nduna. But uh, a beautiful scene nonetheless. Lovely way to open our account here at Pridelands. My name is Chris, and with me on Camops is Panda. And our plan this afternoon was to go and look for those lions, and we did find them, those two males. Unfortunately, they went into an area as we arrived, and uh, they are in an inaccessible area currently. So we're going to leave them alone for now. Possibly return tonight. 
after sunset and see if they haven't managed to emerge out of that very thick area where they are lying. There's no way of getting in there. We did find them. We did see them. They were exactly where they were. But unfortunately, they got up and uh, found another spot, which we literally, physically cannot penetrate. Since it is a relatively warm afternoon, that's possibly why I sort of kind of like trying to seek out some some shade there. It's like the, exactly what we did in a nice shady patch. But fortunately, on the route to one of the water holes, we found this lovely herd of elephants with a very impressive big bull. It's not that one that we had the other day. Amazon is just saying hi to everybody from a hot and beautiful day in London. Obviously, I forgot, it's summer over there, Amazon. The last time I was in London was in 2004, also in June, by the way. The last time I've ever set foot in London. And it was a very hot year then. One of the warmest summers for a while there. I was still wearing a jacket. <laughs> it was coming from Africa. It wasn't really that hot for me. It was a great experience to experience that part of the UK. Very good morning and welcome to the special broadcast. I have got this big lion trying to approach a group of hyenas who are feeding at the moment. I am Sydney Kumurani Mekosi. I am live from the western side of the Greater Kruger National Park, Sabi Sand. Look at that lion, he's trying to come now. He's running very fast to come and disperse the hyenas at the moment. Look at that. The lion is now, the lion is the lion is trying to fight. He's biting the hyena at the moment. This is so sad. Look at that. The, the lion is catching the hyena. This is so sad. That hyena is badly injured. Look at that. Now the lion is coming back to uh, the, the kill which was eaten by the hyenas. Not too sure. Maybe these hyenas got this kill from the lions. I am not sure what happened here, but that was something else. The lion came running aggressively and started to attack the hyenas right by their territory. This name of where the lion reported. A little bit, uh, the kill is a little bit on the fabric according to our standing. But the lions were somewhere in the morning drink time. So I believe that uh, we'll work the area slowly by shore and try to find the lions. They might be lying down flat uh, at the moment, painting very fast after consuming the buffalo. So, it has to be um, really tired now because you know lions are good they gush themselves all the time and that burns a lot of energy because of the heat of this afternoon that makes the lions a little bit lazy to walk so it, it really gives us advantage to uh, find the lion in a very easy way because they cannot travel for a long distances it has to be on a short distances you know that lions are like that in most cases also lap it once they have a kill they prefer to be in the water back into the kill make sure that the kill is always 24 7 god with
Very impressive. They're still in the same spot. They're all just feeding. Uh, no recent signs that they've been to the water, possibly midday. Lots of bulls here. I'm not entirely convinced it's a breeding yet, actually. It's just a lot of bulls. But there are youngsters. It possibly is just the edge of a breeding herd. No, there's a calf. No, no, it is a breeding herd. That calf won't be walking around without its mother. Hey, here's another bull coming to say hi to us. Hello, young man. Are you going to come and check what we're about? I just love elephants. No, there's some cows in the background. But there are mainly bulls around here. Marula shortcake, you know what? Spot on there. It's a Sunday. It's an easy afternoon. I think we're going to do the same. Just spend time with these Ellies and relax and enjoy it. There's definitely a few cows, but I think this is the edge of the herd. It's mostly where these young bulls hang out, except this big fellow. But it's not an old bull. Ah, it's, that's that guy. That's that Induna. I'm near certain. I recognize his tusks. That's him. I'm sure, sure. Lots of bulls here. Well, they are pointing kind of like towards the water hole, so I'm going to stick with them. Maybe we can get uh, a little bit of elephants drinking and swimming, perhaps. We never know. You can see now there is the females and the youngsters in the back. But, I only see one female. This is weird. It's a very weird composition. I, I do suspect this is just a portion of the herd. It's not the entire group. The others are further into the woods. Hello there, Frank. What other Shangan words can I use to describe elephants? Um, right, firstly, the Shangan name for elephant is N with an N for November. Starts with an N. Ndlopfu. Ndlopfu. You'll hear a lot of guys say Ndlovu. That's Zulu and Swazi. It's not Shangan. Shangan is Ndlopfu. No, that refers to the species. Another word that people locally use is kambaku. Kambaku is specifically a very big elephant bull. So what you often find in the Shangan language is that there's a species name and then there's a specific name for big male animals. So in the case of elephants, kambaku will refer to a very big old elephant bull. Same with, uh, for instance, uh, kudu. It's referred to as nongo. But a big male kudu is chabalala. If you look at monkeys, vivid monkeys, Macau, but the big, 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 big monkeys, the big old males, ngovian. Baboons, Mfene, as the species. Big chief baboons, Matebula. Not every single species has that. 
but that's just something I've learned during my career as a guide working amongst the local Shangan people as colleagues. Still have a lot of friends in the industry, fellow guides, trackers, managers, colleagues in all walks of operations in hospitality. And I've worked with some incredible, incredible people from the local area. Many of which are still dear friends to me. Including Morris. Morris is not with us today. He's still busy with his guests that he was uh, guiding. Even old Morris. Yolanda asks if the, if the males or the females that trail behind her, that will be the males, Yolanda. Um, the females generally don't. They stay within the nucleus of the herd, and it's often the males that will be on the peripheral of the herd, whether it be on the side or in the back. Mostly. Remember, there's variance. In this case, they all mix together because they are feeding. Right. I mean that the big males don't permanently associate with these herds. They're not actively part of these breeding herds. A breeding herd of elephants is a group of related females with their young. The males only joins up temporarily and they leave. They're never permanently part of the breeding herds. Males do form bachelor herds or all male herds. They do that. Also, the composition of those herds does change. It's not as cohesive and near permanent in composition as opposed to the females or the breeding herds. So they don't have harems and things like that. It's not like impala where that system is a bit more fixed. And now they're gone. Still one or two there in the distance. Like I did say, they are pointing towards the water hole. Um, and to give an idea, we're up in the northwestern parts of Pridelands. And uh, the water hole closest to us is Leopard Dam. There's one more elephant coming in the front. Um, so I think in the next 15 minutes or so, they're probably going to... head towards the water roll. That's what I'm hoping. All right. Well, I'm going to follow the mainstream herd and see if they do, in fact, move to the water roll. While I do that, let's head over to Cedric. It's just difficult. Uh, BK is trying his best there. Oh, I just went behind the trees there. There, uh, there was a beautiful uh, battalier, a battalier that just came past here now, and we try to follow it, but unfortunately, it went so quickly, it's uh, disappeared behind uh, some of the uh, some of the trees that side. But I just saw another bird fly up here. I'm not too sure. It might be a lilac-breasted roller. Let's just take a look here quickly. Yeah, there's one that's just on the corner. Yeah, it looks like a lilac bridge to if it doesn't fly off. I'm going to just try and get to this point. Do you think it's... I'm sure. I think a little bit down. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's coming back again. It's going to come back again. It's just busy flying around. Oh, it's getting right on top of the Termot Mound. That sounds good. 
Oh, Jillian, I'm not too sure. I'm sure it's something like a Swift and the Martins and uh, Swallows, hey, BK? Yeah, and Falcons. So we actually, funny enough, we were just talking about that and uh, BK was telling me that he saw a, a Lana Falcon um, grabbing a Swift and um, I think up there in Medikwe. And I said, yo, he tried to get it on camera and it was just too tough. It was just too quick. So I think that is one of your toughest ones, especially though, you know, it's quick for foss birds. I mean, the falcons, the lana falcon, the peregrine falcon, really getting them on the camera is going to be tough. But also, as I said, the swallows, the martins, um, uh, the swifts, because they're small and they also just really change direction all the time. And it's not that real one con uh, consistent uh, line. And uh, yeah, so I think for the cam ops uh, to get that is going to be quite tough. But how beautiful is this uh, lilac breasted drylo now? Went to go and sit right on top of a termite mound. And of course, beautiful colors on it. Nice lilac breast, nice electric blue feathers or wing feathers. And of course, that white above the eye area. And of course, looking for any little insects. They are insectivorous. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Tracy G, if I could be a bird, what bird uh, would I be? Tracy G, I'm my favorite bird. I'm going to go with an African hawk eagle. I think uh, they're awesome, and plus you hunt with your partner uh, as well. So you've got uh, assistance, and you're an eagle. So And you're quite fast, and everything fears you. So yes, I think an African hawk eagle, to me, if I could be a bird, it will be that one. Look at that, it's catching all the little insects. He's going to come back on there again. Oh, it's flying. Landed on top there now. Busy little lilac breasted dry lip. Up and down, back and forth. And just like a flower, so that's exactly the, this, uh, the reason for the coloration on its uh, wings is to be like a flower so I'm hoping that anything like any insects would mistake in the, the bird for a um, as a, a bird as a flower and it'll go straight for them and then oof, it came right past us and uh, and then now they'll snatch up the lilac breasted right there yeah he's he, that, that, he's gone now all right uh, let's move on no that sun is a little bit sharp uh, let's move on and let's see I'm not far too far from uh, tree house uh, dam so I'm just gonna uh, get that side again I did get an update this morning as well but it was a very brief update I'm not too sure if anybody followed up in this area but they said that the two black dam male lions uh, came north into into Juma so I'm not too sure uh, I don't see anything I said coming up Philemon's cut line this is this road Philemon's cut line um, I don't see any tracks. Uh, I might just end up going to uh, Treehouse Dam. I mean, we've seen those black dam males a few times around the, the Treehouse Dam area. The sun is nice and bright. It's going to be interesting. I'm hoping that Rexon can come right to those lines that side because it's going to be interesting just to see what's happened there during the day. So, Jody told us, yeah, which animals the biggest predators uh, predator to birds? Sure, Jody. <laughs> it depends on the area. It's very difficult to answer that one. I mean, they've got so many different kind of predators. You've got snakes. Uh, you've got uh, cats like African wild cats and uh, you've got monitor lizards, you've got uh, slender mongoose. So it's very difficult to say exactly which animal is uh, the most dangerous uh, to, the, to the bird species. So, uh, you yeah. know, a bit tough. I can think maybe like uh, if you're looking at most kills, I think maybe even birds against birds. If you're looking at all the gosh hawks, falcons, they go for birds. Your eagles, they go for of course like guinea fowl and franklins. So 
Also, birds can be also uh, quite a huge predator for their own species. All right, let's go down this road. Head towards Treehouse. <laughs> Foxy, have I ever seen a shoe ball in my in my life? Uh, no, Foxy, I haven't seen a shoe ball. Uh, I've seen f videos and photos, of course. I've never seen a shoe ball. I would love to see a shoe ball. That would be amazing. Um, but yeah, maybe one day I can go up to. I think it's West Africa, if I'm not mistaken. West Africa, we can get the shoe ball. I'm just gonna double check on that. But yes, it will be nice to see them. They look so prehistoric, like prehistoric birds. I love it. Almost like the coelacanth of uh, the fish family. Yeah, of, uh, the fish family. So yeah, uh, Shubal is like the, the dinosaurs of the birds. All right, let's slowly, slowly get here. We have set a new target. Join us as we strive to reach our next donation goal of 11,000 US dollars by the end of June. If we succeed, get ready for an unforgettable survival special in one of our sunset safaris. Witness the incredible skills of Steve and Lauren as they tackle challenging tasks like building shelter, making fire, and finding water and food. Donate now and be a part of Wild Earth's first survival challenge. You know, those elephants have moved into a very thick drainage line area there, so they did not go to the water hole. They literally bypassed it and went straight into a thick stuff. So we we'll might swing around there later. There's no visual of them, but we can't see them. Uh, okay, so what's next? Um, all right, I'm going to head back a little bit eastwards towards where I saw some tracks of buffalo this morning.
and then I'm gonna try and see if we can't find them. Maybe from there we can expand and maybe find some lions, you never know. But it's Sunday afternoon, it's quite easy. You know, we're gonna connect to nature. That's what we're gonna do. If I see a nice plant, we're gonna talk about it. Talking about connecting to nature, that's our goal, it's our mission, to connect the world to nature. If you wanna help us, uh, go onto our website and click on the donate button. And that will explain everything. There's even safaris on offer there. If you donate more than $100. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a very cold and rainy Amakala Game Reserve down in the Eastern Cape. We're very happy we've started our afternoon with some of the Plains game that populate the Eastern Cape. Some red hartebeest, our first time seeing them since we've been back. And it's a lovely way for us to start our afternoon adventure after dodging some rain. My name is Tess, behind the camera is Morgan, and we are going to try our best to stay dry. Hopefully it works. But at least we've started our adventure with a light drizzle now. We've dodged some of it. And we get to appreciate the red heart the best. Now we're still in the northern section of Amakala. We did venture a bit further south this morning. We're hoping that we are going to find some cheetah boys hanging out somewhere up here in the north. They are probably also dodging the rain like we have been probably hiding in a bush somewhere but you can see the hartebeest are not as affected which is great news they are probably enjoying this light drizzle you can see they've spread out nicely in the clearing mixture of kind of standing around and feeding and very happy looking very healthy looking now there is some more heavy rain on its way towards us so hopefully we don't have to make too speedy of an escape from this open area but what it might mean is that these hartebeest might start heading for cover just now. So we're going to appreciate them as long as we can while they're actually out in the open. But this is in fact one of my favorite areas in the northern section of Amakala. And it's because of that nice big green patch you can now see at the top with the big fallen tree. I can just imagine those cheetah boys up on that tree. Looking down over the valley. It just looks gorgeous. Well, there's actually a whole lot more. You can see one up on the horizon on the right. There must be about 40 together, which is really cool. <laughs> Tammy, thank you so much for the warm welcome back. We could definitely use it on such a cold day. But we are very excited to be back on safari and especially here in the Eastern Cape. It's definitely become my favorite safari destination that I've worked with. What do you think, Morgan? One of your favorites? Your favorite? <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it is very, very cool today in a very cool place. Oh, look at that all coming down, joining the party. It is so green up there. There must have been so much rain while we were away to bring that beautiful emerald green color out in the grass again. Everyone's kind of standing around. I don't think they really know what they want to do. Maybe deciding which way to go if the rain starts up. Riley, that's a pretty good question. I would say that they are one of the most common antelopes in Amakala, but it's actually very tough to tell. I don't know what the, the exact game count is for red hartebeest versus something like blue wildebeest. I mean black wildebeest, not blue, wow. Black wildebeest, because I don't actually know how many black wildebeest there are. But also don't forget about things like blessbuck, springbuck. There are some impalas as well. Do you reckon? It might be impalas. Uh, we don't really see that many of them, but they're in very specific areas of Amakala. But we do tend to see red hartebeest more, so I can understand where the question comes from. And I think it's because they're so big, and they are known for enjoying these big open clearings. It's very much in a hartebeest's nature 
to enjoy open clearings as opposed to thickets like things like mountain reedbuck or even the impalas and the blessbuck and eland they tend to prefer a little bit more of a closed area something with more bushes and cover so we do see these a lot more but i think the other difference as well is that red heart the best are quite calm where a lot of the other animals might move off. Black wildebeest, for example, we see them quite a lot, but we can't often show you, or as often as we show you red hartebeest, because by nature they're a bit more nervous. So especially if they're in a herd, they tend to move away. So we just get to show you these quite often. But exact numbers, I actually don't know what the most populous antelope would be. I can certainly try and find out for you, though. I think red hartebeest would definitely be quite high up on the list. Probably, yeah, there are two warthogs, and I'm actually just thinking now, warthogs are probably the most populous thing here, but uh, they also don't stick around that often. So the 2021 game count says that warthogs were just about 400. Morgan's pulled up the game count for me. Thank you, Morgan. Very fancy. And impalas were at about 270. So impalas actually more populous than red hartebeest which were sitting at about 150 so there you go impala you were right <laughs> well, we're going to stick around and see what they decide to do the rain is coming you can see they are grouping together to try and stay warm so we'll stick around and see what happens and send you over to andrew to say good afternoon Thank you, Tessa, and good afternoon, everybody. Oh, man, the timing is just not on today. As we went live, there's now a grader that wants to grade the road, but it seems like he stopped, but that's fine. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome again. My name's Andrew, and that's Mr. And Paul behind the camera. Yeah, and we're starting off with this beautiful wildebeest bull over here. We have seen him before, and it's always nice just to have a look at him and see what he's up to. Nice one. There he is over there. Now we've been watching him for a little bit. He's been scratching his hoof on the ground. So he's got a few middens around here and uh, he's been scratching his hoof quite violently against the ground, releasing his scent into the ground. Because remember, there's a interdigital gland between that hoof of the blue wildebeest. And you see them scratching. It looks like they're, they're about to take off or something when they scratch the ground. Uh, but what it's actually doing is just releasing oil and then that's gonna be a good uh, territorial marking. Look at him, he's just walking from point of shade to point of shade. Although it was cold this morning, it's not cold anymore. It's a nice warm day here, especially in the afternoon out here in the northwest. It's lovely. We've been watching a few birds while we've been here. They've just gone off, but we, we saw a couple of um, tawny flank prinias and white browed sparrow weavers, chin spot battis, and a crimson breasted shrike. Nice to get some new ones for the afternoon. Now, in case you're wondering what is our plan this afternoon, we need to get all the way to the northern part of the reserve, which is a very long haul. And so, we are going to begin doing that, in fact. But we're going to send you over to Rexon in the meanwhile, while we angle this vehicle to the northern parts of the reserve. Great, lovely. We are able to get uh, where the lines are. It, uh, one of the drainage line. Start of the catchment. Of course, it's really unbelievable. The area uh, it's got water. We never realized that uh, it might be water in the area that keeps these lines here. Here's the Mr. Mohawk. It's really you can see that it's very full. I'd like to thanks for the whole pride able to join with the sub adult because there might be more vulnerable of course from the um, other lines in the area they managed to join and that is good news look like the whole family and now the structure look like uh, is now working because they can able to protect one another when it comes to any lines but i had a report from cedric there's no far here where we are there's um torch with pride torch with pride with 11 individual youngsters which are not far apart with one another. But I know that the blood of uh, Torchwood and uh, 
Talamatis as far as Kuhumas. They are related. You might find that, uh, of course, they still maybe think about way history, but what can be uh, so much dangerous is the male. The male that I hear, of course, Mohawk is not the blood of uh, Torchwood Pride. Of course, if the pride like Torchwood cross over into his territory, he wants to defend himself as much as he can and shows to the female's world that he's stronger than the Mati Mashe, which is the male that uh, now with the Torchwood Pride that comes from Kruger National Park and set on Torchwood Pride itself. So these guys here, yeah, they stand a very good chance. Mohawk is a lucky, lucky male. Of course, having four uh, sub adults that always stay not to move out of the territory and hang around with him as a father, it's very seldom to find it like that way. It's something that uh, it, in the record from my first time ever I able to really read this. I've seen it before, but later on it does have separated from the Kuhumas where some of the young male headed the east. You know that Kuhuma with the young males or Avoka when they came here, the young males, they, in total they were all eight. They were very threatening once at this stage, but uh, from Kuhuma, I mean from Telamati Pride, they separate in, in different locations. Three went south, three later also went south, one went east, two went all different directions. It happens in most cases, but here what we're going to witness, we are going to witness a coercion that is so stronger than anything else out here. If I look at the young males themselves, Moxie, where'd he go? If I get corrected, I was very loud. But uh, Maredo right there. But yes, thank you. Thank you so much and for a comment. Lovely and thank you for joining us for the afternoon. Let us look at these uh, lions that are fully, fully on their stomach. They've eaten a buffalo. It might be a full buffalo. It's a whole pride that are here. Of course, one buffalo, it could be able to feed them for one night and they get moved maybe somewhere else. If you look at them, you can see it's like a balloon that uh, it's really pumped and live on the ground. They're all painting fast and I believe that it helps the digestive metabolism that can move at any time furthermore to the south or they head to the east. They might stay behind the buffalo again and able to in the next three, two days they can make a kill. Such amazing. I wish to see all these uh, young male in details walking with Mohawk and able to see how big they are. Then I can tell what's going to happen here. In most cases, you tend to see that um, young male lions, if they get in this age, they will say goodbye to Mohawk and move completely away from the area. But if they stay, something that we appreciate. And I was just talking to uh, Owen about five minutes ago before we start live they saw this uh, male walking with mohawk <coughs> walk past by the camera you can see two of them the body height and fitness they're even bigger than or the body shape they're even bigger than the mohawk as father here which is it's really something i can see that uh one that tossing there the belly is so big and it can be a huge male lion in future what this means, all of these four or five ma young men line all together, it means power and it means they will be really able to father a lot of cups around in the era. They will be really holding torches. And uh, yes, more line that added into the bride. Yes, of course, you can see them. They're all here. Maybe some of them that might be still a little bit into the thicket, but the pride, of course, has been added. Remember the three female and four sub adults yesterday, they've joined the five males altogether. They're now part of, they're also part of the pride of five males. So is how actually uh, it works. Sometimes they separate, but if you see that kind of a behavior where the males, they separate the females and go their own direction, it means there are now have really enter in sexual maturity. They're trying to uh, put information behind, scent marking, announcing the area, 
patrol at the same time who is in the area. It will be bad luck if S8 come here. I'm telling you this is, is danger. Even being two and these guys are five, is nothing they can fear. Unless if they're still nervous. But with the whole pride together like this, they stand a very good chance to fight any lines, any structure, or any collation of males that might come into the area. But whole pride, it's part of the pride to assist. Oh, I'm so excited. We could hear black wildebeest this morning. We did not get a chance to show you any. And we found two. This one is the closer of the two, but even more exciting than that, some oxpeckers. It's not very often we get to show you oxpeckers at Amakala. This is so cool. Some red-billed oxpeckers hopping around on this black wildebeest's back quite happily. That is a good achievement for day one. I love it. They are braving the wind and the drizzle and they are having a little bit of a meal time, it seems. <laughs> Morgan says he doesn't know what happened there. <laughs> How beautiful. And this wildebeest bull is looking rather spectacular. He's in such good condition. Looks fairly young. He doesn't have any kind of discoloration or missing patches of fur, no scars, a very fancy mohawk on his nose and a mane down his neck. He is looking very strong. And I think there's something about adverse weather that makes wildebeest look particularly beautiful as well. They're not the most pretty animal but black wildebeest to me are very strange looking but very good looking in a weird way. Completely different to that blue wildebeest that has the flattened mane, doesn't have the long white fluffy tail. These to me look a lot stronger than a blue wildebeest. But I think especially the way that they stand out against this yellowing grass, there's something very striking about a black wildebeest. And even cooler when he has oxpeckers on his back. Because that's a really nice find for Amakala. We do not get to see oxpeckers. Not often at all. Maybe with the buffaloes, but we don't even get to see the buffaloes that often. So, nice to see some oxpeckers riding along. three ox pickers so far on the back of this wildebeest. I have a feeling there were more. Were there not more earlier? Yeah. Maybe they've gone to the other one. Quentin, that's a really good point. So I feel like it's something we take for granted quite a lot. The horns of a black wildebeest are so different to all the other antelopes and they are probably the only one I can think of at the moment that the horns hook backwards like that so like that view from the front they look like they're straight up but as soon as he turns his head to the side like that it's actually a complete bend backwards so compare that to the blue wildebeest where the horns come out the side and then up curl up like a moustache like a buffalo's the black wildebeest is completely different and they're really sharp horns as well very strong build that a very strong structure to have it bending up and backwards a very striking pose highly highly unusual horns oh and look at that patch of fur sticking up off his nose they really are looking magnificent these two very strong males i assume working their way up to dominance very soon So there's definitely one oxpecker on this wildebeest. What 
Is he chewing? He's got something hanging out of his mouth. Is it the roots of the grass? <laughs> yeah, he dropped them. <laughs> Bit off a little bit more than he could chew, quite literally. They do not eat the roots. <laughs> they normally just graze along, usually the medium layer of grass that they're going for. I'm glad he spat out the roots. That would have been rather chewy and very sandy. Oh, he's looking magnificent. Where did that ox picker go? It's high. Ah, oh, there it is. It was hiding behind him. So that's four ox pickers in total. That is really cool. Oh, greener. Interesting question most unique horn structure to me I suppose I, I think I'm actually gonna have to go with the kudu it's the only one with a proper spiral in the horn so there's there's four species of antelopes that we find here that have the spiraled horn the eland the bushbuck the nyala and the kudu they're all in the same family Tri Trigelophus is the genus but the kudu has the deepest curls. It literally looks like a corkscrew, a very deeply curled corkscrew. And I think that is just so beautiful. Where you compare it to something like the bushbuck, the nyala, and the eland, the relatives in the family, they've got a very tight spiral. So it literally just looks like the horn has been stretched upwards and twisted along the way. It's got like a very light twist to it. But the kudu is just magnificent. But there are so many with so many different horn structures. I mean, the black wildebeest, I can't think of another one like it, where the horns come forwards and down and then bend upwards and actually back towards the head. I mean, this one's giving us a great example of that angle, that curve in the horn as it comes back up towards the face. Um, but there's so many that have very, very different horn structures. Even, I suppose, something like a blessbuck or a hartebeest, that kind of heart shape to it with those heavy ridges all the way from the base to the tip. Very, very, very different. But I think the kudu to me is definitely the most striking in terms of a unique set of horns because literally nothing else is even remotely similar. What's your favorite, Morgan? Gemsbach. Gemsbach. Because of how straight they are. Yeah, so also very different. I suppose a roan antelope and a sable as well. Very nice. Those heavily curved horns in the yeah, in a circle going back towards the, the back of the head or the neck. Also very striking. But a gemsbak I can definitely relate. Very, very, very long straight horns. Must be quite difficult to walk through a thick area with horns like that. You've got to tilt your head all the way backwards. The kudu has to do the same, though, I suppose. What a lucky first day. I'm loving the oxpeckers, loving the conversation about horns. A very, very good day. We're going to stick around and see if the cheetah boys decide to show up, and we will send you over to Rickson, who is still with the lions, Mohawk and the rest of them. Hello, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, really, of course, joining me here with the lions. Look at that uh, young male lion, it's very full. I believe that uh, it might be one of the young male. It's really looking beautiful. And one just get up as I speak. I've been dying to see the age of this young male lion. It's, it's really, it really looked like uh, um, getting to the stage where it's the right time for them to, to challenge around the era. It's indeed, I believe that uh, Mohawk is stand a beautiful chance to make uh, his name back into the list of all dominant territory that are in the area as males and uh, it looks like he's gonna be the best best time with the young boys and success of the uh, pride itself it will be very high because this age of the young males is where power most of time it's really calculated when it comes to challenging or hunting they can hunt anything no problem Time to leave the information behind. Remember defecution, it could be part of the scent mark. <laughs> oh yeah, 
Le definitely. He's not going to smell good here. It won't be nice. We have to close <laughs> our nose. Remember, recently they just come from the buffalo kill. All the stomach um, uh, organs and all that, it makes, really smells heavily when it comes to the defecation of our lions. I like the way, the color. Look at the, the body itself, the fitness and halfness. It uh, really calculating on the body of the lions. It tells you that this uh, particular pride, most especially young males, are very healthy. There's another one. Look at there at the corner. is doing the same thing, but that is bigger than the other one at the bank of the river, between the window that I have. It's such amazing, amazing mane. He will be the biggest uh, young male, of course. If we look at him, he is more like a beautiful, beautiful mane. <laughs> and there's a little barber coming in for for drink. Oh, it is very, very clean water. You can see it's just spring from the ground. It's water that uh, comes from the, the ground itself. This is you can see the silver sea area here. It's one of the area. It's a sip line, which sip water from the ground. This natural sort of water which lies by all species leopard and lions they love it and elephants sometimes they come here you can see the defecations and all that look how leopard uh, and lions drink water they just sleep on the water and slowly by sure they will get enough water you know remember this animal that eats uh, meat all of them they need a lot of water it's a beautiful young male So did he, you hope that Mohawk and his pride were for us? Ah, yes. Look like uh, he's uh, in the top of a range. He's a territorial. And he's the dominant at the moment. There's reason he might give us, more special when the sun goes down. Peter, make your way one more over here. More special when they go down. And I believe that... Uh, Sooner or later, he, he is the male that uh, each and every evening in the morning will hear him shouting in the area. Yeah, it is beautiful. Look at that, we, we're at a very close range. And the reflection of water itself, it's such stunning and beautiful. Yes. Hello, Dad. Peter, Peter. Yeah. Not everyone gets excited to hear a leopard chuff, spot a pangolin, or see a real impala rat. But if you are wild about the wild, you can become part of a community of like-minded nature lovers and share authentic wildlife experiences with the world. Join the Explorers Club and you will also enjoy the many benefits that come with it too. Wild with Explorers, it's in your nature.
quite nice about watching this elephant is we can see the entire animal from top right down to the bottom. But speaking about the bottom, have a look at the toes, look at the feet. So now you can imagine when we're tracking elephants and following their sign, we use those toenails that you're seeing there. If you see that obviously in the front of the track, then you know the direction of the animal. But uh, not many people can see that in the track. So you have to look very, very, very carefully. Of course, they are really good at digging. Some of you might have seen that already. So they're going to need some sort of protection on the on the the rims of their of their feet. Same with us. We need toenails for a reason. Look at this elephant, just really enjoying that bush. I was worried it was going to walk away, uh, but this one doesn't seem to re really mind us at all. What's he going to do? Is he going to walk further into the bush? Or is he going to continue eating? He's going to continue eating. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like this elephant is a little bit in thought at the moment, wondering what he wants to do now, whether it be walk on, which it seems that way, or just continue feeding, but in no rush at all. It's always nice when they're walking slowly, but believe you me, elephants can really walk fast when they want to. And they can cover large amounts of distances very quickly, and they melt into the bush quite well. And in some reserves, elephants can even become very very secretive animals. Just listening to a ring necked dove. It's right on top of that dry, it looks like a dry leadwood. The previous name was the Cape Turtle Dove, and uh, the new name is a ring necked dove. But they make this beautiful call, typical dove like call. It's and you hear that throughout the bush felt. Some other doves that we've seen out here, I've seen the Namaqua dove. We've actually shown some of you it. And then, um, yeah, the emerald spotted wood dove. But they are very difficult to get on camera. The emerald spotted wood doves, they're always moving. They fly very fast and they're small. Just sitting right on the top there, like a beautiful decoration. Amanda, I have seen it a few times, and it's a good question that you're asking. Yeah, I've seen young elephant bulls, you know, because young elephant bulls can be a little bit boisterous at times, and they chase even impalas and antelopes sometimes. But I have seen elephants trying to chase herons away from the water and geese and things like that. Also, uh, lapwings and things like that, especially if the lapwings are nesting on the ground and the elephant is walking too close to the nest and this lapwing just goes down and tries to bomb it then um, the elephant gets really agitated and, and actually starts to throw his trunk around trying to almost slap the elephant uh, the the blacksmith lapwing away i've seen them a few times get irritated with ox peckers what else i've actually seen a hippopotamus in the kruger national park Charging an egret. Yeah, a full-grown hippopotamus charging an egret. As we sit here, just listening to the dark cap bulbul as well. Beautiful, beautiful sound. Can you hear some more elephants in the bush here? Seems like there are maybe some of them in the thicket going towards the water. But momentarily, we'll check the water and see exactly what's going on there. Beautiful. And Paul, let's have a look at these branches that the elephant was eating. It's, it's actually quite uh, interesting how it's been feeding on that branch. So this is clear sign of elephant. I mean, elephants leave lots and lots of signs. Um, sometimes you can find it difficult to find their footprints. It depends where they've walked. If it's a very hard surface, you don't always see footprints that easily. 
but then feeding sign is very very obvious for example this one over here stripping the plants eating a lot of the bark stripping a lot of the bark sometimes you find that some of the branches have got little brushes at the end and that's uh, been fed upon by that of elephant Now it's interesting how delicate they can be with plants, but also how destructive they can be with plants. All right, we are going to... Great, the groomers are all snoring here, lying down. I don't think the, they can go anywhere as from today, but uh, it's, it's really interesting. I, I, I thought, I think like, it's very strange from where these uh, male have made the kill. There's Torchwood Pride with the, uh, uh, with the cubs. So I was thinking because these guys are lined up, but hopefully, I was hoping these guys will get up and move towards the kill. And that makes uh, me worried that Maybe Mohawk will go for the cubs. He will kill the cubs because the cubs doesn't belong to him. He's from Mati Mashe Mills. But he's just sleeping here. He's not far, like less than 300 meters away from that area. But he's not even concerned about that pride. He might, I'm not sure. It's something that we, we can really, all of us, really think about. It could be because uh, Torchwood and and Kuhumas that might be related in blood from many his from many way uh, in history, many years in history. I don't know, but this is to me is very strange. Uh, I get the reports from Cedric early this morning that the three female from the um, Kuhumas they went towards the carcass and find this Kuhuma female with twelve cubs, and they only the cubs run away. One of the cubs ran straight to the female and lie down and grow and if the female then bite and didn't do anything. They just growl at the youngster and, and move off. I, this is very strange to me. I, I never see that in my life. I never heard about it because I haven't seen it, but I never heard about it in my life. In most cases, the female will go and kill the youngster to reduce the competition of future in, in the area and the reduced and the nature balance. But this is so weird to see it like that way. I just think it may be, it could be just because in history, these pride are related, all of them. But they cannot really keep up from the history generation and the blood that been flowing from the two pride in after 15, 25 years back, they can still know one another. I doubt. If it's so, it means that the lions themselves they are so intelligent like human beings. They can know that uh, they are blood related in history, cousins and all that, that they are still with the other pride. You never know. It's something that we need sometimes spend more time with lions, spend more time with li leopards, and really study thoroughly about them. But it's really shocking. It's not far, it's close by, yeah. And these guys are not even worried. The female are not even worried. They have seen that pride. They know that they're here, but uh, it's not. They're not going to uh, really react against that pride. They have go asking if the male stick of mohawk. That means it's a new creation. For the young males, it will be new blood flowing into the uh, female. Yes, it will be a new coercion, of course, because the, the, the youngster or the young males, it will be the first time, I mean, to spread out the gene. It's nothing that, uh, the, is not something that, uh, or in history of the line, these new males they have been really put their scent on the ground that knows from five years, four years back like Mohawk, these are new, the new cohesion and able to come across. Yes, it's not new with Mohawk, within the blood of the Kuhumas, but with these young males, it, it will really take it because of all four, it's a new cohesion. They might uh, conquer 
Kuhuma, the mud conquered uh, Telamatis, because it's pride. I mean, if you look at the young males, being four and five of Mohawks will always challenge them. It will be respected in everywhere. And of course, on the territorial of a males, it's like a wheel spin. You would never know amongst the five. Yes, Mohawk is the five that will always take a lead. But after two to three years, Mohawk will lose power. This is one of the young male here. He will be more, most dominating the rest. Then it becomes something new into the blood of the female. Yes, it will be. According to me, because I never ever made it. It's a new creation, of course. I don't know whether I've answered a question, but accordingly, but that is the reality. And there will be something in the record of lines in service sense never been recorded where a father have cohesion with the own blood. But bear in mind also that these young males, all of them, and the subaltern, when they were here, uh, the other one, Blondie, was still alive. Some of them, the father by Blondie, some of them, the father by him. Some of the offspring here father by Blondie, some of them father by Mohawk. That is in nature. And all of them they were sent as one unity. They're not going to be challenged. That's reason I, I was doubting quite a lot. I'm not saying that I'm very much experienced and know exactly what happened in the area. The young male that we have seen with Mohawk, it could be the blood of or a vocal. There's no way that uh, uh, Mohawk will be allowed him to come and join him. He'll be related somewhere with the pride. It can be not father by, it cannot mother by the same female here, but it can be father by the gene pool of uh, Avokas. It could be dark mane, it could be one more, uh, it could be Mohawk, it could be, of course, Blondie. I haven't seen in my life where the lions can join a male lion if they're not related and it will be peaceful. Sometimes you might find that he's leading knowing that he's met his own blood and it's more like I'm gonna do it. You know that uh, dark man was always into the, the north of the Juma Conservancy up to Manuelity have met a few females before he even died before S8 may take over. The male have changed the wind here. The wind is look like a little bit smelly here where we are. But uh, I believe we, we can switch in between the two pride. But my concern is if the action take place, we cannot witness. Great, just as suspected, the elephants have come through the block of land and are now drinking at Chikudu Dam, which is a brilliant sight to behold. And it just, uh, yeah, it's interesting how things work, eh? Because about five minutes ago, there was another vehicle here and they were doing some bird watching and looking at the dam and they've now pushed on and driven off. And uh, so we came in after them and uh, yeah, this is where the elephants are now. So if we were here five minutes later, we would not have seen them. Oh, there's a little bit of a trumpet there. Got some young calves in this family group. And there's a family group that goes to the Jackie's watering hole almost on a daily basis and blocks the entire road. Yeah, we reckon there's about 40 of them in that family group. 
not this family group though. This is a, also quite a nice size one, medium sized family group. But some family groups, wow, they can get very big. I remember in the Kruger Park with my father seeing over a hundred elephants in a herd. Can you imagine? Beautiful. It seems like they're in no rush at all. Shame. I think they've done a lot of their activities for the day. Pepper, how many elephants do I reckon here? Let's see. One, two, three, four. Oh, look at the young calf. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's about ten here. There could be some more that are around the bush, but I think for the most part, this is all of them. I'm just going to just watch and see if and hear if we can't hear any more moving in the bush, but I think this is all of them. Ten in a family, and there's some young calves in there. That calf that's the youngest there looks to be about maybe about four, four months old now. It's got a long way to go. Got its whole life ahead of it. Remember, elephants can reach the age of sometimes up to 55 years old, around about there. So this elephant has got a long way to go. You often get that saying, don't wish to be an adult too much because when you become an adult, you wish to go back to being a youngster again. Beautiful sight this. They are very, very still at the moment, slowly drinking. I think they're pretty tired at the moment. I don't know how far they've walked, where they've come from, but it seems like they've been pretty busy today. There's so much water in this dam. It's beautiful to see so much water. Look at that elephant. That young elephant having a good time playing. Oops. <laughs> oh, it's playing with the other one now. Oh, it's always lovely when young elephants play with each other. It's very sweet to watch. And it's important. It's very important that they play with one another. This is how they establish their bonds. Because each individual in this family group is going to be very closely bonded. It's a family, literally. Look at that young elephant. How often these young elephants, they false tusk the ground and looks like they're trying to bite the ground and they lean down. Lucy, you are right. There are some very wonderful extremes out here and that's very well described. Now the environment's out here, if you're an animal and you're going to survive and thrive out here, you're going to need to be strong. The fit of the fit. Because the environment is very harsh out here. Yes, there's plenty of, of water. But it is still a harsh environment. The sun is incredibly strong here. And then, of course, the winters are very cold. The summer is extremely hot. I'm just listening to some red bull oxpeckers just doing a flyby. You might see a few momentarily. Shame, these elephants are really just enjoying the moments being at the water. They don't want to quite go in, rather just drink from the edge. But still, stand around and catch your breath again. They're all feeling a little bit hot at the moment. We can see all of them, they're flapping their ears a bit. They cool down their body by creating a bit of air draft, cooling down the ears. Because the ears, ultimately, there's a lot of blood vessels on those ears. So they do lose heat if they cool the blood vessels. And then the, the blood travels through those cooled blood vessels, reaches the brain, keeps the brain adequately cooled. Beautiful. The light is just becoming extremely perfect right now. It's getting better and better. And roughly in about an hour and a half we should be at sunset. Oh, look at them throwing some dust on their body. So obviously getting hot there. So just to throw some dust on the body creates a film. A film over the skin. And that's going to protect you against the harsh sun. It just filters it. 
Now don't forget you can ask us questions at any time, any place, any location. You're always welcome. And if you'd like to register to ask questions, you can go into the website. And if you are on YouTube, you can sub subscribe to get some amazing notifications on the things that we are seeing. And then you can also watch on the Wild Earth app. There we go, one of the elephants dropping some dungs over there. They do produce a lot of dung. They're mega herbivores, so they eat a lot and they go to the toilet a lot. They say adult elephant bulls can produce up to 100, 100 kilog kilograms of dung in a day. That is a lot of compost. It's a blacksmith lapwing just uh, walking close to those elephants there. Look at that. Uh, don't you wish you were that blacksmith lapwing? Get nice and close. Beautiful. This is a really peaceful sighting and it's always a bonus when you have the sighting all to yourself so we get to watch them. There's no other vehicles here but they're welcome to join if they want. But I think everybody's distracted on their own sort of plan, their own mission for the afternoon. Tonya, I would say, well, with a bull elephant, I would say a full-grown adult considered. We would say around about 20 years. It's quite a long, long way, hey? Yeah, it takes them, it is a slow growth with elephants. Most of the mammals that you see in the wild, they grow very quickly. It's impeccable how quickly they grow. And before you know it, you know, some antelopes, they're almost fully mature. In a year and a half with elephants it's a very slow development you know being a big animal there's a lot of things they need to learn how to do because if water runs dry they need to know how to make a backup plan for digging for water and that comes with a few skills in itself you need to be able to smell the water and know exactly where to dig and then things like feeding what plants are they going to feed on and how they're going to feed on the plants if they're going to destroy plants or break them, how are they going to break them and for what reason? Because if they don't think about these things, then, you know, just now there would be no vegetation. So elephants, they really choose about what they want to do with the vegetation, whether it's being eating the roots and they're going to push the whole tree down. Or if they just want the top branches, they might just break a few branches from the top, leaving the tree to be able to survive another, another day. But elephants are very conscious about their effect in the bush in terms of how much they feed. So elephants know if they destroy an area, then they're not going to have too much left. They are that smart. Now this elephant seems to not want to catch up just yet, get that last bit of drink of water, practice a little bit of rebel behavior, and then catch up. And just like that, just moving through, the rest of them have disappeared. And you can't even hear those footsteps. And there they go. I think that blacksmith lapwing is rather happy that the elephants have left. Interesting to watch elephants when they go to the watering holes and there's blacksmith lapwings busy nesting. These blacksmith lapwings are so brave. They literally go after these elephants with full force and fury. And at the end of the day, an elephant might try and swat away to defend itself, but at the end of the day, it's going to end up running away from that bird. Boy, oh, see the impala drinking there? That's pretty cool. That's a typical African 
photograph or frame. Nice big impala ram there. Just looking at this angle that we're at, this is that, uh, that angle that you see when the crocodile leaps out the water and grabs the impala. But as far as I'm aware, there's uh, just a small little crocodile that's living in this water hole. It's about maybe a meter and a half long. Not to say that it can't do any damage to impala, it most definitely can. But these bigger crocodiles, wow, they are fast in the water. They can hold their breath for quite a long time, between 45 minutes and an hour, just lying in an ambush pose waiting for some animal to come down and drink. The animals are very smart, the antelopes are very smart. Just drink quickly and move on. Don't take your time. And the impala is also gone now. Wow, what a quite a cool bit of animals that we've seen here so far. Thanks to our wonderful Wild Earth Explorers, Wild Earth Kids is back. Your monthly subscriptions have allowed us to relaunch Wild Earth Schools on a weekly basis, every Wednesday for the first hour of the Sunset Safari. You guys bring a smile to my face every single day. Sign your class up for a special virtual field trip to Africa, because touching the lives of the future protectors of our Earth truly matters. Great, we are here with this hyena. I'm not sure which one is this, but uh, it looks like the lions or the kill not far. The lions are still enjoying the last uh, moment of the uh, carcass that uh, Avok, I mean, the Avoka Mohawk and the Kohumas have made. And the hyena is just lying down. It doesn't show us a little bit of a sign, but you can see here the lion lying down here. Could be not far from the the point where we are, but let's try to work around the area and see if we can find this little or cups of lions feeding on the kill. At the 
might be on the fabric. This time needs to be tall. from here there's a lot of vehicles going off bus one vehicle went here and lots of them oh, sorry <laughs> look like I'm in the right track now Yes, but in most cases, as long as the hyena behave, it's not going to be danger because uh, the lions which can be in the same area where the hyena are as long if the hyena doesn't interrupt. Oh, here we go. Oh, no. This sighting is very tricky. See how desperate is the pride of lion, especially if the whole pride, of course, are not successful on the kill. These these youngsters look like uh, they're just waiting. Where's the kid here? We can't hear the bone crunching of these uh, guys. Maybe they have finished the kill. Is this? Okay, let, let me reposition myself. Thanks, Owen. Owen just put it exactly where the rest of Pride are lying down or eating. Let's try to get the I know that most of the time tortured Pride a little bit nervous. Nervous pride, of course. When it comes to vehicle, we, we heard that uh, there's 12 individuals here. We will, oh no, man, shame. Look at this. This is amazing. You see, if uh, a walker comes into the area, the whole cops are going to be killed. So these cops might be put into danger but their own pride to be very close to the dominant male and his own family. And believe me, these cops are not father but the same dominant male that you have seen previously. These uh, they are father by Marty Marshmallows that comes from the south and I believe that uh, the male is not here there's nothing much that he can do the female have tricked the youngster and really showing that uh, they are very struggling when it comes to success of on the hunt that's raising the all be here if you look at this youngster it could be multiple young males and in the nature of a male, dominant male, they might kill the youngster to reduce the competition of future because you know that if you let the youngster grow to adulthood, they might go into challenging, especially these young males that are here. So the Mohawk male is not going to be happy about the presence of these young males because he knows that one day they're going to challenge his own blood. Come on, yes, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us for the afternoon ride. We are really, I'm so much impressed to see this product of line so close to one another. And I had the report from Cedric that uh, the female have come here, they have never done anything to the cops. 
It's a great news. If you look at the behavior of lions in Savisense in general, they avoid one another. As you know, that lions are very territorial. That means the same species of same gender. It cannot be in the same area. They compete and they kill one another. But yet, we see the strange behavior of um, females not to do anything with the cubs, which is good to see that. Who knows? Sometimes it's something that we can miss out. You might find that this youngster, they're not even father by Martin Marshley, it might father by uh, the male at the Avoca from Mohawk, maybe from Blondie also. When they send them, it's, a gene, it's the same gene pool, so you cannot be so harsh to them. Or Mohawk, he knows these cubs that is father by him. Sometimes females, when they get to competition of males, what they can do to stimulate the power between the two males, it will mate and cut estrogen between the two males, then they can scent one another as the offspring. This torchwood pride, torchwood pride. It's only one female. We ha have that report. We have incalculated. It's a 12 individuals, but now I can calculate it 10 that I can see by my naked eyes. So they're all 12 according to Cedric, and this from Torchwood Pride. They're much further by the same male. So how can the same male uh, able to kill his own offspring because he's, he does have uh, the other pride that uh, they compete with the female. He might protect them and let them join in a kill without any problem. You see the growling of this youngster, it can attract this pride. They're not far across a flight with the other pride where we are. It's less than 400 meters. So the growling like this, it might uh, cause a serious attraction of the other males to join in. To be interested, we have taken over into their area and fight with them. Let's take this opportunity over to Sed, who is heading towards uh, Gary Dam. Thanks, uh, Rexon. Yeah, we've got some caper buffalo here at uh, Gary Dam. Well, it is uh, the last few that's coming through. The rest have already passed um passed by had their drink and they've already moved into the thickets north of the dam as you can see their direction there all heading away still got one or two nice males look at that big boy on the side another big boy in the water so of course the straddlers just behind and usually the older males the big boys they will be behind the rest of the herd just making sure that the hind end of uh, the herd itself is secure and safe in case if there's any lions trailing them. Well, there's a one that's very happy. A good old Sunday, Sunday jive up the bank. But look at this guy, big boy, good old, almost a ton. You can just see that dewlap under his neck. Big shoulders, big horns. Very, quite a stunning male that, isn't he? don't want to mess with that one there's an older one just behind I think is that one with that oh, half a horn Remember the other day I think we saw one is it has he got full two no he's got full horns that's a big big male those are big shoulders Oh, Giselle, it's uh, difficult, really. I can't, I, you can age him in like a plus minus category. You know, I can like, you know, say a big male like that, maybe about, oh, I can see how he posts, opening his mouth, just making sure, showing his teeth. It's like, hey, this is my water. But yeah, you know, like you look at the dewlaps, you look at the horns, you look at the size of the body. So yes, you know, there's certain things that you're taking in, in account on, uh, on aging a buffalo. 
But I mean, you can know, you'll never get it really spot on when it comes to these older ones. You know, but from when they, when they get to about 10 to up to about 25, you can see why the hippo, oh, is he gonna, he's not happy with that male being there. Let's see, he's gonna open his mouth again. Pretty much almost like an aggressive sign from the buffalo, uh, from the hippo. He's like, hey, what are you doing at my water? He's just keeping an eye on him <laughs> and investigating. Clearly the buffalo is not phased about the hippo's presence. But of course the hippo won't kill him. Maybe the hippo might splash a little bit. Sometimes they'll hit their head against the water, open their mouths and shake it around. Like that again. See what he's doing? Just showing that he's like, hey buffalo, look at me. Look at my mouth. I've got this big mouth, my teeth. It's not that big yet. It looks like a young hippo. Maybe more of a uh, like an inquisitive hippo that any, than anything else. I'm just going to sit here. There's two of the buffaloes that's busy. Having a bit of a play, play, a pluck, a play fight, a bit of a sparring session. That's nothing too serious. As you can see, they've really ended that moment. Oh, the hippo's going for a fixie. Oh, look at that. Oh, the hippo's thinking, oh, look at that. I have just chased you away from the water. Yes, I am victorious. It is, it's very nice, nice to see this. It's always nice to have sometimes a little bit of interaction between different species. But as I say, it's a young hippo, so it wasn't really showing too much threat to the, to the buffaloes. You can see those two boys are still busy enjoying a bit of warning, because they're practicing. If they really do fight, then it is serious. Then you'll find they'll try and tip the other one over. Uh, sorry, we are a little bit behind that branch. Now just... it looks like those buffaloes are heading away. We might just have to shoot around towards some Wubu Road. What do you think? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to shoot around the other side. Just to see if we can fire, pick up on those buffaloes again. Beautiful afternoon, not a breath of wind. The sun is shining, it's nice and warm. Lovely. The hippos are busy laughing there. So I'm back at Gary Dam, of course, for buffaloes and as well for that kudu that was alarm calling a little bit earlier around camp area. So <clears throat> I might scratch around here. I did have uh, the Lumbers tracks um, coming all the way towards Twin Dams, turned up there to, uh, a little bit south again. Looks like went a little bit into Little Gary. The guys are busy following up on that female leopard. So let's see if they're going to come right there. I don't know if they can give me a shout. This one coming. Sorry, boys. I see there's two males that's just next to us here. The stragglers, of course, the last ones that 
and some moving away from the water. Lovely, we still have touch with pride and uh, look like uh, it really, for the youngster, they're still really enjoying the last bit of the the buffalo. They're just going uh, nimble on the buffalo head. There's nothing much left. You can see the female that are struggling where they come from. This is one of the um, signs that the lions, of course, if we look at the, the whole society of the youngster being 12 or 10, all individual and look at the condition of the female that they struggle quite a lot. It's not all the time the rest of the product can join together and make a kill. And this can show off from the skin activity and physical healthy that uh, they struggle a lot. And, and this uh, breaking fight between these two youngsters, I'm very much afraid because uh, this can attract uh, nearby pride to come in unless if the avoc I mean the avoca male knows this uh, the rest of the pride but you can see that the history of the young some especially the young female that are uh, really rubbing the mother if you look at the back itself it does have information history that uh, shows that uh, once before he's been really into danger there's a claw mark on the um, hips on also on the waist of the lions, that uh, it might happen that uh, they cross over into the territory that doesn't belong to them, and able to be clawed. It could be a female, it could be male. You never know that uh, wood claw have caused that, but in most cases, it could be yes, of course, territorial boundaries. It talks, it really imported to uh, the right whole society of a lions. Standing by. Afternoon, uh, Rex. You the only one making their way to the Goma. I think we're away there. I'm live at the moment. I'll come back to you. I'm a cheetah cut line of Touchwood. Cool. It's looking good. I was just finding out about the uh, Kuhumas. If they are still there, there's other vehicle that, because most of the time, I need action to see what's going to happen. Yes, of course, some of the action which we're going to predict what's going to happen today, it could be not the the best for for lots of for viewers to see here yeah, lions getting killed. But that is in the nature of these species. Uh, I I still don't believe that uh, a vodka, if it gets to the area, you will let this youngster to 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 run away. You might try as much as you can to impress the female, kill the cubs, and send the female into estrus, especially with this collection of other four sub adults They can mate and able to really protect their offspring into the area. So all these cubs, that's raising, when it comes to land population, is not something that you can guarantee. I can't say that land population in the Greater Cook National Park is doing well. With the stats of the whole area, it tells that uh, it's 2,500 I mean, lions that is in the area. Due to competition and nature balance that takes uh, place all the time, it might happen that all these cubs to make up to adulthood. Francine, any males that uh, it, it moves into the territory and find the cubs, is the biggest problem. Remember the, the the males all the time. The reason why the patrol are able to move in the territory is to really mate with the female and protect their own offspring. Come across if any product doesn't belong to them. What they're interested with is to mate with the female and kill the cubs. That is more important. That's the reason Lion population, even look at all of them here, chances of them to survive is very slim. It's very slim. All of them are not going to adapt, they're going to survive up to added wood because of the competition of the nature balance itself.
very sad. I just wish this pride has to move into Toju furthermore east in Kruger National Park to stay there. I wonder, maybe the rest of the pride are still uh, been lagging behind the buffalo. I doubt all these uh, 12 or 10 youngsters does not belong to one individual female and it belongs to several uh, females that uh, might be in a pride. So by tonight they have to join the rest of the pride. It could be through vocalization, it could be through transcend mark to follow one another and get into the point. Lucky enough, those boys are very full. The belly are floated from the side. They cannot able to run that much as, as much as they can in able to catch the speech of the young uh, or sub adults. They will be always able to be quick and move away and maneuver into the thicket very easy from those fully uh, bellied males. I would like to learn something today with this pride. Maybe I stick with this uh, uh, touch with pride until get I can see what they thought uh, the perfumers are going to react. But uh, definitely, if you look at the number of the young males here, if perfumers or Mohawk and the boys, the Mohawk, I mean Mohawk is involved in this pride is continuous. But if not, it will be deaf. I can calculate one, two, three, four young males up to five now. So all of them, if they go to adulthood, this is, becomes the a problem. We are waiting and see if there will be a record break by this new kind of uh, young males that are taking over from a pohos. Eagle lover, thank you so much for the afternoon. I have Owen behind the camera. I hope that uh, Owen, thank you, thank you for you for your camera work. Uh, we don't have BK, BK is with the uh, Cedric at the moment. And maybe because thank you, Eagle lover. We with these lions, I, I'm so glad, I'm so excited. This is my last afternoon drive, of course, with the safari life. Uh, I mean, it's really get to see Toshwood Pride. One day I'll come back again in science, hoping these youngsters have to grow up. But what I've learned with lions in science, they really avoid one another quite a lot. Fighting and killing is something that uh, is not happening like before in a town history of Mapoko and Machingalan. So it's a good news to see that uh, even lions are very civilized. They have nowadays, they have old days. Old days of us fighting nowadays is social, which is very, very interesting. Every time, I mean, it's an evolution in life. Also, us from human being, each and every hundred years, we see something changing all the time. It's called evolution. Maybe it might be part of evolution. Who knows? No one knows about it. It will be something that uh, I was so shocked when I was really getting report this morning. But let us learn. All of us on a daily basis, we have to learn. It's not, uh, there's no hero out in nature. All of us, we're learning in a daily basis. It's really, really interesting. But if it's like that, it means the population of the lions in the area will grow big. really amazing here and I'd love to really say it uh, uh, it's really really nice to see these lines of course if you'd like to help pop into our, our website and click donate there are some private safari if you donate about um, 100 US dollars or more with, with your choice. 
Lauren and Steve and Cedric. The goal for the month is about 11k. So these guys are meshing there. They will take you to Safari and uh, I mean really show you the beauty of Juma in the area we will traverse. It's unbelievable. They take you on a live safari, which is really, really show all the best survival skills that they really do. These guys are such amazing. Of course, always here, they show leopards and lions and everything that uh, it will be really around in the property or vicinity of Juma property. So you can really, if you like to donate, it's up to you, it's, up to, it's a choice, you all know, you all read every time. Um, I'm just reminding everyone that's interested, it's really, really free to do that. I'm live here with this line, my spirit is healing. Also, if you donate, you'll be able to be part of this unbelievable experience. I hope this uh, Toju Prada back into the area due to the uh, movement of the buffalo that comes into the area. We are in the winter season here at Juma. It's a high season. There's no doubt that you cannot see anything out here. In the winter season, it's always the best. You'll see uh, lions, you'll see buffalo, you see leopard. Although for the last two three days, we haven't seen our leopard due to the high density of lions that moving into the area, of course, they avoid one another. We all know that you cannot blame that is nature. A leopard cannot be forced to be here, of course, because do you know that uh, the lions that are moving in numbers, it could be danger for the leopard to be in the surrounding. Oh, it's looking beautiful. I'm very excited. As I said from the beginning of the drive, I have a lot of energy to go out there because knowing that what's going on is something that I'm learning. I'm recording at the moment, this day, and what I've seen and what I've been reported. It's unbelievable.
then I am happily going to oblige and remain right here and wait for this sun to set. And I think this is going to be one of the best ones in a very long time. Because there's some fires in the greater Kruger, especially in Kruger, there is some early sort of like management burns going on there and there's a bit of smoke, there's a bit of dust in the atmosphere. I think all of those will combine to create some very interesting colors. So maybe, just maybe, this is going to be the best one for a very long time. I reckon it is. I reckon it's going to be the best sunset for the last couple of days. So let's wait and see. All right, well, we are sitting here. We had uh, this uh, herd of buffalo that just moved past us and in this uh, beautiful light, but it looks like most of them has gone. We've still got one or two. This female keeps on looking back uh, towards the lodge side, so I'm not too sure what this female picked up on. Maybe something following it. I'm not too sure, but yeah. And uh, they, they go into the very, very thick vegetation, slowly but surely away. last two. It was a beautiful big herd. Oh, maybe about 100, 150 of them that came past us. Mm. Yeah, we'll have to reposition and see if we can get any last sighting of them. Oh well. Oh well. Yeah, they're going straight. Uh, even if I stop your BK, they're going to go straight into the thicket. So, yeah. we are. let's try. Yeah, let's see if we can get the. Yeah, but we go in. They're just going to be further out again. Yeah, let's. They're going into this. Unfortunately, they're going into this drainage line here, and it's. We might. There's a other little road that's around that side. I think we can try and. Well, that side is it because they're going straight into there. All right, so let's go around that side. Yeah, there's a road. Right, yeah. All right, let's go this side. I'm gonna go into the drainage line. Well, still got one or two. Yeah. I'll try again. Danny, yes, nice to spend some time with a, a herd of buffaloes. And as I say, they're right, uh, they were at Gary Dam, and then they are heading now a little bit north, slowly towards uh, Biffles Hook area. And I'm sure they will be crossing not too long from now into that property that's just north of uh, Juma. I'm just keeping my eyes peeled here because, as I said, they're there was those kudus alarm calling in this area this afternoon as we went out on drive. It's beautiful, beautiful afternoon. You can see some of these. See a female on the left, male on the right. You can just see the difference in the horn size. And another female coming through there. And of course, in these herds, will move. All over in the uh, in the park itself, they don't have really a set territory, so they're not territorial. They've pretty much got the home ranges, um, meaning they will move throughout the park. Wherever there's uh, enough green grass and nice uh, sweet grass for them, they will head into those uh, areas as well as water holes. Sandy, if you say, if you're talking, how many bulls will be in one bachelor herd? A bachelor herd is just bulls. So we could have two, could have three, could have 20. So, Sandy, yeah, 
uh, it, it can vary from from even one a dugger boy right up to I mean I've seen uh, in uh, bachelor herds of about 20 25 uh, males together to safety in numbers so yes it can vary but I think the most common is a little bit less uh, maybe towards like three four five but as I said varies oh look at that fork tail drongo now you can understand why they call it a fork tail drongo see that stunning V in the tail like a fork fork tail drongo so of course this uh, bird follows these buffaloes so while they are walking through the grass busy feeding they are disturbing all the little insects around there and once they do that and they see little insects flying around this drongo will fly and snatch those insects up and have a nice meal but the one male remaining here. Last boy to go. Alright, I think we let's go around. Alright, I'm thinking I'd want to catch him on that other two track maybe. We might be lucky on that other two track that side. Let's go and take a look. Sure. It's a little bit uh, fresh here. As soon as we, as soon as you drive out of the sun, <laughs> the temperature just drops. So. All right, so let's just amble down here slowly. But as I said, there was that male leopard tracks, but it doesn't look like big male leopard. It looks uh, like a medium-sized uh, leopard tracks that we had here at uh, Gary Dam. Actually, we found them this morning, so that's why I want to look around this side. Just in case. Oh, sorry, that is just uh, my coffee that went flying. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> anyway, let's <laughs> I could have said that's Rusty's uh, wheel that went flying. I'm just joking. All right, here's some buffalo. There's some boys in front of us here. Nice males. So they're just going into the dip and look at that beautiful lighting behind. Feeding away. Very much bulk feeders. Lot, eat lots of grass and they will ruminate as well. So sometimes they will bring up the cud and they will ruminate on it. Others they will re chew it to get as much nutrients out of it, out of the grass, especially winter time once the grass starts uh, dying off. We'll have to eat a little bit more. All right, let's. Uh, we've, got, we've got another one there. Oh, we've still got two there coming through. All right, and it's let's go. All right, good. Let's see if we can go around that side. Oops, it's another male. That's just coming. That's a big boy. You can see he's got some mud on his uh, on his back. You can see he's been been wallowing somewhere, and his back is caked with mud. So it helps him quite a bit, especially on hot days. Keeps him nice and cool as well as for those parasites. So you can imagine if there's any ticks or any fleas that's uh, sitting at the bottom of that mud now. Uh, they've already been suffocated. And once the buffalo decides to maybe rub his body against a tree or something, it'll peel that mud off and of course remove those parasites. Great, Larry, thank you. Uh, this few must start to tell us uh, a very good news. It looked like he just went immediately off and the youngster just lied down and went up in elevated area. That means that uh, 
maybe the Kuhumas are starting to make progress of movement, moving, maybe to cra ta come into the area to check around or moving into Cheetah Cut Line and move in the direction of their own choice. So what happens now, the female as she's going up is to see and signal the cubs, the danger of arrival of the female that might be here or males might be in the area. So as a female or, or lions, you have to run all the time from other part of lions. It's in the nature. We know that survival of the fetus, that's raising uh, energy is very, very important. They have to eat, they have to be always strong and able to move and able to make progress of their life or defend or run. Otherwise, you might be into danger. You know that anything that is weak out into nature, it will take it out from the system because it's not strong enough. If it comes to nature, it's all about survival of the fetus. If you're not fit, forget about you you being in this area because you will start to compete with the hyenas you start to compete with buffalo you start to compete with the other species because you're so weak and all the time if you are reasonable weak you will be a target you will be selected you will be really really targeted with all species just remember if a buffalo see a weak lion the buffalo will go for that particular weak uh, animal and kill it exactly the same if the lions get across with the buffalo that is very weak they have to take that out of the system it's how it works in nature it's survival of the fetus all of them if you're not fit enough end of your life but this is very interesting that teach us quite a lot all the time we talk about territorial we talk about males we talk about the female that taught us look what's happening here touch with pride it's within the area where Kuhumas are. And these cubs are making noise, growling and doing all of that. And the Kuhumas are right there. They're not even responding. All right. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's not yet where we want it to be, but it's already looking spectacular. Just look at that. Just look at that. That is just beautiful, big orange in the sky. You might actually even get to see it go down. It is rather pretty. And I think we chose the right spot with a bit of help from our viewers. Mm, here's a Franklin going berserk. Something has bothered it, perhaps a slender mongoose. And there's another Franklin making a noise. Isn't that pretty? Bushveld sunset. It's as good as they get. David Wild thing, indeed, the sun is definitely showing off this afternoon. And it's such a integral part of safari is to appreciate the sunset when they're on offer. Sometimes it's cloudy and you don't have them. Slowly just dropping further and further down and as it's getting lower and lower and lower closer to the horizon the angle through which the sun's rays has to penetrate through the atmosphere becomes more and more steep which means there's more refraction of the light and therefore that's why as it gets closer to the horizon 
it becomes more and more and more intense in terms of color. I'm happily just sitting here. Jasmine, are we, do we feel when it gets colder? Jasmine, literally by the second as we sit here, you can almost feel every centimeter it gets closer to the horizon. You can feel the temperature dropping literally. We, we can actually feel it. In summer, it's less pronounced. In fact, in summer, there are days where you don't hardly even feel a difference. It just stays hot. But in winter time, where we are now, you can literally feel it. It was a warm day. It was in the high 20s. But it will virtually drop almost a degree per minute almost now. And you, and you can you can you can feel it. You can literally literally feel it. It is very very notable. Noticeable. My apologies. The moment it is still comfortable to such an extent that I don't really have to wear a jacket or a jumper. But give it another 10 or 15 minutes, it's very likely that I would need to. Unfortunately, I am on a rocky outcrop which retains the heat a bit longer. The sun that bakes the rocks as opposed to the deeper sandy soils in the valleys, which cools down much quicker. And they're also lower lying, so the cold air sinks into those valleys. So these higher lying areas does remain warmer for a touch longer where we are now. You probably find the valley behind us where the camp is situated is probably two degrees colder already where, you know, as opposed to where we are now. And that's all simple science, it's all weather. There's no magic involved there. Cold air sinks, warm air rises. But it's also got to do with the fact that we are on the apex of a rocky outcrop. Soil is very thin here, so the rock, the bedrock is very shallow here. And rock retains the sun's heat from the day much longer than sand. Sand loses it very quickly. Even in places like the Kalahari, I've worked there for two, two, nearly three years. At Tualu. And even there in summer, as soon as the sun is down, the temperature drops because it's deep, deep, deep sand. Like I said, sand doesn't really retain the heat as well as solid rock. Rock takes longer to heat up, but it retains the heat for much longer. I'm talking rocks close to the surface. Brandy, it, it, it can get better than this, believe it or not. There was a couple of high-lying clouds. It can cost or reflect more of the sun's rays. And by no means want to distract from the sunset. It's beautiful. It actually can be better, believe it or not. Not that this is not good, this is great. In fact, this is one of the better ones we had all week. You can clearly see there's a layer of gunk. I call it gunk, but it's dust and smoke. Obviously with the air sinking now, it's getting cooler. A lot of that accumulates close to the surface and that's where the sun is heading towards now. And that's why even with the naked eye now it's comfortable to look at the sun. Not for long periods, but still 
You can. Briefly. And how amazing is that knob thorn tree in the foreground? That is such a beautiful tree. It is one of my favorite tree. Since for me it's I don't kind of like one of the epitome trees of the bushveld and lowveld. For me, without the knobthorn, it's not bushveld or lowveld. Two very similar biomes. One called bushveld, the one called lowveld. It's more a sentiment thing, really. In terms of the plant communities, they're very much the same thing. Dawn, I echo your sentiments there. It makes me also feel very peaceful. Lovely comment. And coming back to Bushveld versus Lowveld, in terms of ecological classification, they're actually very similar. They are both wooded savanna systems. It's just the Bushveld lies further to the north and west of the country. And it's slightly higher lying at about six, seven hundred meters above sea level, if not higher. Obviously, the low felt is bush felt that are just very low lying, 150, 100, 150 meters to about 400, 500 meters in some places around here, but most of it lying very low. And some people classify it as the same, and a lot of People don't, and there's nothing wrong in that. You go to the north and western parts of the bushveld, the guys they will tell you this is not bushveld, this is the low felt. And some people believe it's one and the same thing. I look at it from an ecological perspective. It's the same plants, the same grasses, the same trees. So for me it's one and the same thing. They both have a different charm. I spent a bit of time in both and grew up in the one and worked in the other. So for me this is Bushveld as much as it is in the western parts of the province. There's nothing quite like a campfire. The crackle of wood. The scent of bush willow. Its warm glow. Sign up to be an explorer and curl up to converse with your favorite naturalists and guests at our next fireside chat.
the, into the area where we first see them. I don't know what's going on here. They were moving out and coming back to the same spot. But what I realized with the pride itself, the individual female, she might be smart, she might be not smart, she might be really putting these uh, young lions into danger because uh, the Mohawk and the boys are not far. It starts to concern me, more especially when the sun goes down because growl, the, when they growl all, all the time, the sun travels far, it, it, it might uh, really cause them some very serious damage into the whole society. And I believe that uh, these, the rest of pride, I don't know where they are, they might be far from here to defend. If the young boys decided to come this way, which means it could be a really s a serious fight here, or not a fight really, because we will fight only one female against five males, is death. They all look beautiful, they all clustered together. That means that uh, really they know about the presence of the other pride that's in the area. There's reason they all bunch together in order for safety. When the up go run, they will all run in the same direction and they can able to really move. I wish if the rest of the pride of Toshi would make a kill, these youngsters are, are very hungry. It's not time for them to feed themselves. I mean, get uh, food to eat. They cannot survive for another two to three days of such food. It will become weak and it's dangerous. I love the lions, especially in this age. I love seeing them with the the rest of the pride, with individual females. Even a hyena comes here, there's no way this pride can defend themselves because they're in, in, inexperience, all of them. They cannot defend from the uh, hyenas, especially in Juma clans. Juma clans are really big and huge, and the females are so healthy and strong. They, they can really drive them all from the kills. I'm so surprised. I mean, humans have made a kill. It's a full grown buffalo. Of course, if you look at the. They have left here this morning before the sun rises. When they grew up, they can split up, but at the moment they have to uh, rely from one another for safety. Uh, they cannot split up. But once they get to a suburb that's somewhere there, they can get uh, their own way. But especially they can get uh, their own way with their own mothers and sisters in their own direction to hunt and be able to be successful. But you might find that all of them, they must build up, of, of course, according to who is related to the rest of the youngster and take them in their own direction of life of course how it depend on hunting and where territorial it's more important water food this is more important for them Let's go over to Chris. 
we should still have a little bit of a sunset to enjoy. Oh, sun's down. Now we're just going to get a bit of that glow, which is great. It's part of the sunset. You see the sun going down, and then afterwards you get that beautiful colors. Even sometimes even more elaborate than the actual sun, sometimes not. It's, every day it's different. We're going to sit here and check. Look at that. Now it's like a candy floss type of color. But we are going to get a bit of a glow very soon. Enjoy it. I'm just going to keep quiet for a second or two and just appreciate the view. Crested Franklin also calling. <laughs> leopard lover saying there's some leopard withdrawal there. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. And yeah, no, it's time for us to find a leopard. It, it's really time now. And uh, there was a leopard that was calling around Leopard Dam in the far northwest uh, this morning. It was a report I got from one of the safari vehicles. The leopard wasn't found, but perhaps we can try and drive around there. Maybe, you know, after dark we are lucky. You never know. There's also a leopard calling around our camp this morning. And we are a little closer to that area, so perhaps we should circle around the camp area a bit. Widen it and narrow it again. I think that's probably a better plan from just the perspective of where we are at the moment. It will take us 40 minutes to get to Leopard Dam from where we are. So two different leopards vocalizing this morning. Uh, and none of them were found, no tracks either. But the significance for us is the fact that we know it places those animals on location, meaning we know that there was a leopard around there. So the only thing we can do is to try and circle around in like a spiraling motion on the map, widen it and then narrow it again until time's up and hopefully that will yield a sighting for us that's my plan it might work it might not but that's what we're gonna try and do but it's definitely statistically it's time for us to find a leopard The longest I've gone without seeing a leopard here at Pridelands. It's uh, unusual. Very unusual. And they are around. We see their tracks. We hear them. But you'll see just one morning we're going to wake up and there's going to be leopard. But yeah, at some stage they will show their face.
This is very peaceful, I must say. It's relaxing me. I'm sure it's relaxing everybody out there as well. Okay. What I'm going to do now is getting our equipment set up for nighttime operations. And I believe Cedric is driving around looking for animals. So let's head over and see how he's progressing. Thanks, Chris. Nothing much happening on my side at the moment. I'm just uh, coming slowly. I'm just do working the western side again of Juma just to see um, if that female leopard Shaduli didn't come across or the male leopard to spin. So I'm just going to work slowly and then I might end up going towards Treehouse Dam or Twin Dams maybe uh, for that female leopard tracks that we had this afternoon. It went straight into Little Gary, but she was all over. Little Gary on Twin Dams, been up that side, on the southern side of uh, of Juma. Uh, so I'll head up in the, to that direction a little, well, not too long from now. Other than that, you know, just ambling along. We're all losing light now, so this uh, sun has set. It is getting nice and cool, and this is the perfect time now for some of the nocturnal animals to start getting a little bit more active. Uh, just see uh, Aramark babblers here. Yeah. Oh, it's called the Aramark babbler and they're usually in the little families. You see little Aramarks on their chest, that red eye. Beautiful little songs. Almost do like a walk ride together so They'll find one family calling, and then if there's another family close by, they'll also call. So we'll almost do it like like a war cry. Let me know this now. Hey, I can sing louder than you. Aren't they beautiful? They're very much a sociable a bird when it comes to sticking together. Preening itself, maybe they might come and rest here for the night. I'm not too sure because it is getting a little bit darker now, so slowly the bird activity is slowing down. Chili, chili, yeah. It was Billy or Chili? Not sure, yeah. That's a, well, let's say Chili. Yes, you never know what you're going to bump into. You never, never know. And that's what's always nice about these safaris. It's always, it's always something that's going to pop up around the corner. And that's all I'm hoping for. Some rosettes on the western side, yeah. I'll just keep my eyes peeled. goes. It's preening itself. I'm sure after a long day, days flying and moving around with the whole family, of course a good old preen will be good. Yep, there we go. All right. All right, looks like they moved on. We go. Let's move on, uh, Beaks. I think let's see what else we can find around this side. As I said, I thought, <coughs> heard, uh, talking about uh, lions now, like the guy said this morning, the black damn male lions came across towards the side, but uh, I don't know, I haven't really seen anything so far this afternoon, um, track wise. So maybe they went back south again. Maybe I just misheard that guide.
Live, live, live. Well, let's mock the last couple of moments. I was actually thinking to move, but um, there is still a little bit of colour in there which we can milk. And at the same time, we are not moving, which means we can hear sounds which could potentially give us or give away the presence of predators. Other than uh, the sunrise, there's a beautiful view as well, which we're not going to show you yet. Well, it's not really going to work from a lighting perspective, but I can actually I have almost a 360 view where I have here. And there's just bush and more bush and more bush. Actually, quite a lovely view. But it doesn't beat that sunset. And then soon we will embark on our search for these leopards. I just love the shape of that tree. It's just beautiful. It's like artwork. Such a typical knobthorn tree shape, but still unique. Every one, each and every tree. No two trees are exactly the same. Also within a species, you will have certain growth forms, but they're not exactly the same. not heard anything that can point me to the predators but we're gonna go and try and find them we are gonna try evening Sebastian it is breathtaking watching this transition how it goes from the Sun going down seeing all these colors and then just one moment it's dark and talking about that I can actually feel the temperature dropping so also pretty soon I will need to put on some layers it's gonna cool down substantially our evenings are quite cold at the moment as well as the mornings Really hoping for a leopard tonight. I really, really hope we get one. Because they've been really absent for quite some time now. They've been eluding us. But we will prevail. Right, let's rig our IR stuff. Let's go and find a leopard. Still here witnessing this uh, pride of Torchwood. Not far from us, we can hear the uh, vehicle moving to our left. And also the Kuhumas are not far from one another. It really really worrying at the stage to see if this uh, pride is going to move to the east and able to go away from the rest of the Kuhumas but look like they're all like not concerned about anything it's a nature we cannot be clever more than nature of course the lions know what's going on the relationship in between is something that uh, really is more important at the stage if you look at so we are here to learn we are here to really witness something that it never witnessed yes of course they have set the history they have set uh, 
a point in the course of a morning. We, we want to achieve something this afternoon. I was hoping that uh, <coughs> the Kuhumas might be moving in this area, but uh, all fled down, and the female looked like a, at the stage. She's looking down west directly where the males are. She doesn't show panicking. She doesn't show being nervous. So it's something that is good. Uh, I start to relax the muscles of my mind, of course, about this pride. If it's, anything is going to happen, and now I just I'm really certain that the cubs are safe. They will move out of the area without getting hurt. The female knows about. Maybe the matimache, they might be not far as we heard about the tortured pride might be in touch with uh, following buffalo somewhere else. And these guys are waiting for maybe balloon of the buffalo. You never know what's going to happen at night. Maybe these guys have been, the attention has been drawn by the buffalo that were killed and the simple they come into the area hoping to join when they kill. They find that the number of kuhumas are so huge. They cannot be able to pass the pate on the kill, especially on the youngster. Busy time, it do happen. Uh, 2023, it means like uh, we'll learn something new here with lines into the area, especially with his head of buffalo that moves in, uh, in and out. It tells that. Uh, the lions will come in numbers. There's still more lions coming in. I believe that we have Touchwood. Touchwood is Mbali Pride. It's the same. It's just a matter of the other side of Mbali. They call it Mbali Pride. But we call Touchwood. It's one of the pride that's been existing in the area for many years. Touchwood and, uh, of course, Kuhumas, Sticks. I don't know about Skutani Pride, whether they still existing. Look like they're no longer. I feel pride. So there's quite a lot of uh, prides of lions that uh, of course in the area they can stick their nose especially high season water buffalo to eat. Devana, yes, my ear was itching, but uh, I just get uh, towards the end. Does the lion have a breeding season like antelope? No, not at all. These guys, they can breed at any time, at their choice. How do works in the pride of lions are out works with the lions and uh, leopards and hyena? It's all about the fitness of the species. If the uh, animal is not fit uh, enough in order to breed, it cannot be sent into a uh, mating season. The same as an elephant, if it's not healthy enough, it cannot uh, enter into mating season. It will stay out of that. So lions, most of the time, and the hyena and the leopard, once they get a certain percent in the body system that really shows the healthiness, they will enter into mating season at any time, any season, any day, any month. Of course, so that's the reason you find that most of the species, as far as buffalo, they have to withdraw and make their body stronger in order to come back into the system of in order to enter the system of mating. So it's the same as lion. If a lion have an injury, it's not going to make it, it's not going to be really entering into uh, oestrus and mate because the physical healthiness of that particular individual is not qualified, is not reached the certain percentage to be in, reprodu in reproduction, of course. So it's something that uh, it has to be like in in a very healthy status, then you can be so much um, productive, get into production, of course. If you look at the lions and leopard, it's such amazing how actually it works. If a lion enter into mating season and find that it's in average sort of a percent in a body system, when they give birth, it will be only female. If you find a female that hunt and successful, and she's like 100% fitness in the body system, if it gets to mate, it will carry males in, in, part, in most species. So actually, a male genetic, it needs something 
You need the female that's healthy and strong that they can carry the hormones to deliver males. So males are tough in order to get them out in nature. You need to really get healthy and strong. And so if you look at the Kuhumas, look at all those females from Kuhumas. They were physical healthy, that's the reason you get four young males there that were born within the structure of Kuhumas. Remember the purple eye have cups there. I believe it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there were three young young males and one female. She physically half, that's the reason she able to give three females at a time and one female. It's how it actually works in the nature of a body system of a female when it comes to production of themselves, when it comes to the gender, or what uh, actually cups they will get, what gender they will get. If they're not physical, they're not gonna get males. If the half is strong, they get males, same as leopard. There's reasons, once at a time, we have seen Kurula, a female, have both two cups, they're all both male. On that time, on that status, when she was in breeding season and also able to give birth, in duration that period, she was a strong and healthy. There's reason both male were even to be uh, born with the female. In the nature, I've calculated three or less than four here of the young female, young males. It might come from one or two particular females that uh, genetically are very strong and healthy. Female, got, get up and move. I know. No, that can't really attract the Kuhumas. I know in this pride of the uh, uh, Torchwood, there's a called black nose or big nose, you call it that way, but it's black. Some of people they used to call it pink nose, but it was back black. It was pink before, but turned to black. She still exists in the pride. She's one of the old female that uh, we can identify the sort of pride. I mean, that is touch with pride. Some of the names are dangerous because the lions, they go into new areas and suddenly on those areas, the name given certain name and you find that uh, all the time they were seen and it will be posted to that particular name and change the name because in one area, they're more dominant than the other areas. So the name like uh, Mbali, it will be more popular because the Mbala guys in Kruger, they will be always posting stories about this particular pride we find that in Torchwood is less activities of vehicle that can really keep toes and posting about Torchwood pride but definitely there is a Torchwood pride Imagine. when it comes to naming of the lines of course it's nice in the greater Kruger National Park in an area like this in private conservancies and all this because all the guys before they name the animal they get so they they go they get together in a rangers meeting and discuss about the name and each and every guide in a different corner of the property will come with its own name and all get together but the first preference is the guides where the leopard has been born in that particular area you find that they have voted kalamba so they will be kalamba if you look at the other name doesn't suit the the activities of the leopard to character of that particular leopard or lion is not going to call it like that way. But there's no one other ranger to be participating in the other lodges. So all of that name, all, or about all the rangers, they will name that particular animal of one name. And the identification of the uh, leopard or lion, it will be um, sent in different uh, uh, social media in order to discuss about the identity of that particular leopard that's raising in service end. We've got Nyamazan group, which is from the corner of the service end to the end of the service end. Everybody posts there if a leopard gets into your area and you don't understand about that particular leopard is new, you take a picture and post it to the other guide on Nyamazan group, able to tell you exactly which the leopard. So we tend to be like more unique these days and able to share information and be no call animals in the same name. Listen that.
Ooh. It's a hyena. Uh, they failed to come. They failed to come and take over in the pride here. I had that uh, during the morning they come in here. Then the boys from Kuhumas, they come and really rescue this uh, pride from hyenas. You know that uh, hyena and the lions, they're really internal enemies. They don't like one another. If a hyena gets here and make a shout and try to drive in these lions, male lions will come and sort it out the hyenas. We have an exciting new Wild Earth prize up for grabs. Have you ever wanted a private virtual Wild Earth safari experience with our naturalists and crew? We are making that dream a reality. Sign up to be an explorer before the 15th of July and you could enjoy a private virtual safari with friends and family of your choice with either Steve, Cedric or Lauren. Make lifelong wildlife memories together with Wild Earth. time to see you never know some movements of leopard lion um, <clears throat> yeah the best sighting we had of the brown hyena was at this time beautiful but our directors they're very sharp and they know that uh, when we do spot brown hyenas it's very quick so they're, they're always on the lookout for it and they're ready for it Look at these zebras are very very relaxed at the moment just very very relaxed So you might just see some of the young foal that's just there I'm hoping it's going to come out a bit more into the open and you can see that beautiful fluffy coat that they have See that zebra is just listening to all the birds that are calling at the moment. It's 
quite interesting. Just on the other side of the road is uh, some blue wildebeest. And I've uh, got zebra on the one side, blue wildebeest on the other, with the road directly in the middle. So there's not the boundary or anything like that where the animals are not going to cross, of course. They're going to mix and go. But it's interesting sometimes, you know, with, with leopard and lion, sometimes things like roads become the edge of their boundaries with leopard and lions. It's very interesting that. The edge of their territories. Not the zebra, not the wildebeest. Tonight they're probably going to hang out together and just watch each other's backs. And the mornings go off in their... And they will go their, their different directions when they want to feed. I'm just going to watch them a bit more. Very, very pleasant time of the day. For the first time that we are switching off, that we're not hearing elephants screaming. The other, yeah, you know, just this morning we heard elephants screaming. They went on for about five minutes or so. And again, this afternoon when we were at one of the dams, we could hear some young elephants really trumpeting away. And I've got uh, just the suspicion that Andy, oh, that's fantastic to hear that you're new. Ah, oh, that's awesome to hear. It's always nice to have new people on board with us. And it's just amazing, like over the years, how Wild Earth has really grown and become a big part of people's lives. And I remember when I first heard about Wild Earth, I think I was in the year, what year was it? Year, about year 2008, I first got to know Wild Earth. Um, and I watched one or two things. And yeah, just over that period of time, and of course lockdown happened. And um, yeah, people didn't have much to do other than sit back at home. So Wild, Wild Earth really took off. But it's, it's wonderful to, to hear that there's a new viewer. So Andy, welcome. And if you have any questions, you must send them. So Andy, we are out here in Madikwe Game Reserve. I'm not sure if you've gathered, but there are different locations as well. So here in Madikwe, it's going to be myself and Ampor. And uh, we've had some good things that we've seen over the last 10 days as such. I think one of my favorites was definitely the brown hyena. And we had a fantastic lion sighting the one day. Beautiful, really a great time of the day. And we often notice, like, you know, this time of the day when we, we're driving along, we often come across guides who are stopping for drinks and sundowners with their guests. So this time of the day, as soon as things calm down, it's the perfect opportunity just to get out the vehicle and enjoy the bush during the change to the night. But in any case, let's carry on. We're going to send you over to Rexon in the meantime. Great, lovely. These uh, lion cubs look like they moving out. I mean, they were just crossed the river, they're coming back in the same area time and again. I don't know what's special about them here, but uh, some of them, the, a few more, the oversight of the other side of the road, the cubs are coming back, and there's a hyena starting to move in. There's one hyena not far from us that gets it in. Slowly but sure, it means like um, the hyena will start to take over from the um, skeleton that left behind. And there's no much, there's only one cubs that is still feeding at the moment. i give you an update about it. And I believe that um, this part has to move away to the east. Maybe furthermore to the Kuruga National border that can happen that over a day or night they can move that much far. Especially uh, where these other pride of lions, they have to move away from them. Maybe they might get the rest of the pride. At the moment, you might find that the rest of the pride are successful 
on a hunt. They're sitting right here. They cannot know what's going on. Oh, the female's right here. The other, she went back to the other side and collect the cubs. It's unbelievable how the lion can move so quick and really covers with the rest of the pride. Oh, lovely. Thanks. I'm so excited to see them stepping out of the danger because we need these lions in future of course we cannot see another young male lions or collection of five four if these guys dies in the area it's nice all the time to have a history with the lions in the area and know exactly which pride comes from where they have grew up it's such amazing although we still it look like it's more than whatever we thought Yes, the all twelve, the all coming out now. The all twelve, uh, Cedric, you are correct. They were all twelve individuals here in the pride, and they are moving. As they cross this road, they touch with the other side. We have no rights to follow up unless if they come back again into the area where they were. But you can see that uh, it's time for them to move. Amazing. There's no one that have a deformation of the uh, feet or, or kinky tail. They all are healthy. That means the mati mati pride, mati mati pride, males. They're not even related to tortured pride. They come from their own area and able to breed. Kwaheri, goodbye. They're not going to come back. I believe we're gonna leave the area. They're crossing into tortured. Furthermore, to the east, so we'll uh, get Judy commenting on the pride. Good, thank you so much. And uh, good afternoon, Judy, or evening. Nice to uh, join us and uh, nice to hear your comment. We are leaving these uh, lines and we're gonna head uh, straight to the Yes, I was very much concerned to be here. I look at this hyena coming straight ahead. Look like he's been told that uh, the lions have moved out of the area. He's come running and rushing into the area. Wow. Unbelievable. Great. I'm not going to stay here. I need to give a chance for a um, vehicle that goes to Turkey. It looks like it's quite a number of vehicles that are moving in. Knowing that the lions are in Torchwood, they can follow them. I was staying here, in fact, uh, to get uh, more info and able to get to know what's, what's going on with this particular pride. Because, indeed, we need to really follow up with all actions that takes place in the area, more especially Torchwood, Torchwood pride and Kuhumas. The are, the males are not uh, fathering the cups of torchwood as far as my knowledge. So it could be danger for the cups to come in clever. Also, from my knowledge, it is a big danger for the cubs to be close by with this pride. But uh, sometimes it's something that uh, I have no experience what's going on out in nature. Because sometimes, most of the time, we're going to close down by half past six. What takes place after half past six, nobody can know exactly. You might find that uh, Avoka is, is the father of torture to youngster. Nobody that uh, witnessed that. But we know that's a, a different pride. Of course, that uh, we, we guarantee and uh, it's true, it's reality. So, but you cannot know what might be going behind the seat. I've learned, I've taken it that today, that uh, sometimes it's not always that the pride can fight and kill the cubs. It could be if they're not related. It's something special that makes them uh, really not to fight one another. And over many years that we follow the lions, we've seen that happening. Uh, 
I wish to drive here up to the bottom of Kruger National Park in the border of Mozambique that I can really, we can collect quite a lot of information with lions, pride, leopard, because we can have more time with them, stay with them behind. Great, lovely things. Uh, I'm on Chitakatlan heading straight to the south. We need to get more reports of leopards who's moving into the area or not. I was just listening to the radio. Everyone this afternoon, they were really, really excited and they were waiting to see what Avoka and the sub adult are going to do with this cast because they are in the territory of Avoka. Two weeks, three weeks back after the kill Avoka had at East in Torchwood and he come back from the East with the young more young males into the area. Nobody knows what is happening there in the East. Maybe I have joined the uh, Torchwood Pride. Who knows? Nobody knows. Something that uh, in more Riley, this animal, the freedom of movement, it can be a leopard nocturnal species, of course. I would love to see that it could be more hyena, it could be leopard. But what I wish for me to see and also for you to benefit out of it and love it, it's a leopard. I'd love to see leopard now because we have seen lions. We haven't seen leopard in the most of the week and enjoy the sighting of the leopard. So I cross fingers to see a leopard, of course. Uh, I, I know that uh, people are waiting, they can be in front of the screen, they can be at the office, they can be riding, they can be, you know, Wildlife is one of the very best program, of course, because it brings uh, life, uh, experience, of course, and nature into your house, into your office, wherever you are in part of the world. This is the the true uh, sort of uh, a live show. It's happening right now, and as I speak right now, I'm driving here to the Cutland this minute. If there's a line there, you see right there. It's not even edited, it's live show, which is uh, really, really nice to see that. I'll take Mamba Road uh, to the west, uh, across Mulawati. You know, a leopard likes to uh, walk in a riverbed. In most cases, that's the reason I like to go across that riverbed. Linda, uh, Ardwolf, they are into the high ground of this uh, area in, in, in Jovek, up that way, Karu. But here we have hyena, spotted hyena, and the jackal. Yes, of course, we do have, we used to have one brand hyena. I don't know where it ended to head it north. A um, couple months back, I was in the uh, Pride Land. He was reported at the Catalan and Mijajano, where Chris is at the moment. Maybe Chris can update better uh, about uh, the brand hyena that uh, hangs around in Pride Land North. Uh, section of the property. 
They might be not yet seen, or it might be vigorously seen on that area. Who knows? Because uh, in most cases, it's always in the field. But there will be a report, of course. There's quite a lot of game drive that takes place there. Especially this is the high season. All the areas has been loved by tourists, so it's where we get a lot of uh, update and all the documented uh, films that uh, or clips that people do when they're in a drive. They might see this leopard, they see hyena there, see the lions. We're able to see that uh, photograph it and know that's a new mall in Prideland, which has been seen by the majority of all guides at the moment. I cross the finger when I go there, I want to see this uh, big dominant male lions that hangs around into Pridelands Conservancy. There's some eyes further down there. Oh. Looks like Impala crossing the road. You see um, what us is there while I'm really driving here. Very excited to see that. Let's see what cross here. Let's see what's moving here. I just spotted something crossing over here. Yeah. Stop here and check around. It could be something imported. There's nothing around in the area. Maybe it might be uh, a white tail mongoose. It might be gone into the thicket here. Dark main lava talking about uh, when last seen a pangali in the area. As you as you saying asking question, it might come out. You never know. But for me, it's been ages. It's been a while. The only time that I've seen pangolin tracks, it was a few months back when last I was in here in Wild F. Maybe it's five six months back. I've seen pangolin tracks at the Bevisuk uh, site. 
I've seen lots of tracks of people trying to track that pangolin tracks in and out of that area. It's been wild. But uh, physical seeing it for me has been many years. Last I've seen it, I was in Chitu Chitwa in 2012, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And there was one reported uh, furthermore wax watch we're still driving a simple bill as wild f and it was not easy to get that here because of the queue of a vehicle that goes every day on that particular area to see this specific uh, um, species which is very rare to find here in the african bush Hi Wild Earth Lovers, I'm Holly, I'm from Rochester, New York, and I'm a wildlife explorer. I'm also the proud and ecstatic recipient of a three-night stay at Matsuiri Safari Lodge in the Dequay Game Reserve. So Wild Earth, I want to thank you for being there, I want to thank you for this wonderful prize, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you shortly. Sign up today and you could be the one experiencing it. found nearly throughout the country. Probably with the exception of um, true desert and forests. I don't hear anything at the moment.
No, nothing actually. Is our hair still there, Panda? Oh yeah, there it is. They look so vulnerable, but they're not. They <laughs> those ears are like radar dishes. They um, they, they they there's no threat for these guys in terms of a species. They are everywhere, very successful, and they native. They native to the to to Africa. They're not foreign. So they're not an introduced species, they are actually native. It's a natural occurring species. Vivian wants to know if they have a mating season. Uh, Vivian, no, they do mate throughout the year. They continuously breed as soon as they have reared a group of leverets. Get back to that word now. They mate again and they produce another one. The proverbial breeding like rabbits. Oh, Sahina's calling there. So a leveret is a baby hare. being serenaded by the hyena there. So another sound coming from the water that sounds like either elephants or buffalo. <laughs> Poo! Yay! Best ever chew toy. The lion cubs do lose their little milk teeth like other animals and it's something that we've seen more with leopard cubs than we have with lion cubs. We haven't really focused in on the, the process of their teeth and the way that they grow but it happens sort of around about, I'm guessing with lion cubs, around about six to eight months, maybe eight months would be more realistic, where they start to grow their permanent teeth and the, the little milk teeth pop out. And that is elephant dung. And elephant dung is fun. I'm bored with tails now. Elephant dung is the next thing. Wow. Yes, does that taste nice? Blah, 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 blah. Flim. Great, uh, we are heading to the west. How can you see that uh, uh, there's no moon navig navigation yeah, yeah. here or oh, the Southern Cross that you can be able to tell south, east, west. But uh, as I'm driving, I'm heading to the western sector towards the, uh, look like, uh, towards the Gary Dam. Just looking at the star. Sometimes I'm, I'm so nice and good with the stars in a very good, uh, Day, I can able to uh, talk about the stars. It's amazing, but the cloud is a little bit darker. Stars are like scattered around. Not much about them in the area. Let's head now. I mean, towards the Gary Dam. You never know what might be there. Mulawati tracks was there, and we had the early on Cedric who was trying to see this uh, leopard. You know, Mulawati sometimes in the course of a day. Uh, it's like a ghost. Yeah? You can't able to find him and see him. His information, spores, it cannot easily get to be seen. Especially if he had the engine of a vehicle, he always dive into the bush and hide for you. You might drive past while he's looking at you because he's nervous. So sometimes you need to know where exactly he is and able to be patient and stop and give him more uh, time where he can get up and start to move and follow him behind. He's very smart. If it's one vehicle, all the time you find that uh, Mulawati will be behaving. 
this leopard, it comes from Timbawati area. He was born there, raised there, and he walk all the way down from the uh, north and get in this area of uh, Juma uh, Service Science, uh, Juma Conservancy. And he's settled around in a drainage line just in front of us called Molowati. You know that all the leopards that are in the area and lions, they give a name according to the preference of the species as a character or normally what the character likes to do in front of uh, people in most cases. So it will be a really give a name on whatever suits that particular character and uh, the presentation of it in front of us. Love it. Mulawati was seen a number of times in Mulawati River, but he was always sticking in Mulawati and always get to see him, he did dive out, run away. Everyone that uh, spot uh, this leopard, male leopard, it was around Mulawati River, but so we all, dis we all agree that uh, this name is leopard, not Gijima, it has to be Mulawati because it's always, we find him around Mulawati. There's one leopard that I still remember the best. My favorite leopard ever in, in the history of Juma. There is Port. He was always in this road. Gary Dam, Central East. He was so cute, very relaxed. And I believe that uh, many of you that uh, started with Wild Death for many years, you might still remember all oh, this leopard. And also white love female. She was also the leopard that moved into the eastern direction uh, from central on that area up to Tochut, first rock, second rock. Um, white love female. She was very, very used to a vehicle, fun to vehicle when it comes to hunting. If you start the engine, as the engine go, she'll move very close to the side of the vehicle and able to hunt anything that might be in front of the vehicle. So those leopards, I still remember them very well. Yambiri, your dance, your dance, Mafufunyan, Shivati. Those are the old leopards that started to the history of Juma itself, or Viatella Juma camp itself. Those are the, the legends here. Yeah. I remember well. You know that uh, Mafufunyan was the only Shivati and Mafufunyan. The, these two leopards they're the most dominant leopards in the entire northern service science. They were coming from uh, south. They can move from south up to the north of service science. And every time you heard them calling, because this uh, leopard, they have big territory. Shivati, especially that leopard, was very well known. Uh, I mean, a fighter. Remember Tyson at that time? Remember Yambiri Jordan this time? It was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful leopard. Tim Sokwen. Let me check a leopard to the edges of the water hole before I drive past here. Yeah? You find that maybe it could be leopard drinking water here. Yeah? And if you first, you can see it. Apparently there was a male leopard that crossed over into Juma, uh, yeah, towards Boabab uh, Dam area, um, close to our access as well, somewhere in that in this vicinity. Apparently a male leopard, but very skittish. So I'm not too sure exactly which leopard. Uh, so I'm just gonna quickly have a little bit of a scan down here. And just to see, maybe we are lucky with the last minute leopard, which would be fantastic. But other than that, I uh, haven't had too much luck on that, but I'm just keeping my eyes open. Come on, we can find this last minute leopard, I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm sure. Seems like I'm getting a lot of last minute leopards these, these days. Yeah, I 
Sorry, I was just listening to these guys. Valerie, thank you so much. Sorry, I'm just trying to listen. These guys are just helping me out with the leopards here. Uh, so we're just trying to see if we can get this leopard luck going here, Valerie. Oh, I'm hoping so. Um, the guy says that the tracks is coming out this side now. We don't know where it is. He says it's, it's a big male but skittish. So I don't know. It's, uh, I can't be more white because he doesn't come this far west. So uh, it's too far west for more whitey. But as I say, you never know what's actually played out. Alright, sounds like he's got the tracks crossing it behind us, yeah. The last one, is there anyone behind me there? Okay. Alright, let's see, let's see. But it might be for, it might be uh, TP, because this is TP's normal area. So uh, there's another vehicle here, so I'm just going to try and uh, just quickly speak to this guy. A dibby is Hile. Famaso. Sure, sure. All right, says so you could. Yeah, sorry, I just spoke to the guard now. Ah. Uh, uh, this. Not if we get anything, yeah, but let's try. see anything here so far. There is impalas here, all very relaxed. I've got very relaxed impalas here. So, maybe he's crossed into towards the power lines. That's also very possible. There's plenty of impalas in here. No! So trying to get that uh, male leopard that crossed in now. I'm sure it must be tortoise panel because it is his area as I say. We are on the western side of uh, Juma and we might have like the last second of a leopard. We never know. Uh, we'll see. Coming up to the power lines. I'm sure this thing has already gone. Plenty of impalas, yeah. Now the impalas look very relaxed. The guy said I heard him pile his alarm calling around here, but well, we'll try to take a look again tomorrow morning. Uh, if no luck now, um, we'll see if we can uh, get those rosettes tomorrow. I'm hoping that we can start the week off with uh, some rosettes. But yeah, oh, anyway, we'll, we'll try our best again tomorrow. But yes, I just want to say thank you to everybody for. Uh, joining us once again on our sunset safari and as always thanks for the comments the questions that uh, has been sent through to us we do appreciate it so much always keeps us on our toes and uh, we're gonna cross fingers for rosettes tomorrow morning early tomorrow morning we will start off with the rosettes let's see let's see all right but yes, oh, what is that? I saw eyes. No, it's not. It's impalas. More impalas. But from the Wild Earth team, have a wonderful evening and we shall see you in the morning. This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised.